Good evening, everyone. It's Saturday night. It's time for Modern Comic Mayhem. Tonight, we're going to have an awesome show for you guys. We've got Comic Reviews, Infinite Frontier, and the five comics that elude us, and a bunch of other cool shit. And on that note, Brian, cue the music. And we're live. Hello, everybody. I'm Kyle, host of tonight's host for Modern Comic Man. Tonight we got the most hated man in Star Wars, Mr. Marco. We got the guy who really doesn't know anything about Star Wars, Mr. Solo Wookie. And then we've got the guy that thought he was going to get introduced, but really hasn't yet. But everybody knows Mr. Brian McClay. Good evening, everybody. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm glad Good. to be here. I have it's been a, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to make a whole show and I'm really looking forward tonight, man. We got wow. uh, it's a good show to be a part of tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was only a couple of one book. I'm looking forward to that list of books that eluded us. And you guys can definitely add in on the chat. We'll probably read some of out. We might not go through all of your five, but if you want to put all five, we will. I only had one, but then they got me thinking. So I definitely I definitely got a full five list. I know last week I said I was only gonna say one, but we're coming back with a full five. I haven't heard everybody's list, but I'm intrigued intrigued with that. But um or we well, let's explain. With? Let's explain what that list is real quick. So the 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 books that elude us are kind of like what the books that we always want that we can never seem to find or still haven't gotten yet, or the stars just haven't aligned yet that we've been able to get it for a way that we could get it, or it's just you know I'm too much of a cheap bastard to to just fork over the cash for it, kind of. I, yeah, that's the hardest part for me. There's a bunch of mine. Uh, in fact, every one of mine I've I've seen or held at one time or another. I just I can't freaking afford them. I take that back. There's one I've never held, but I have seen it. I know it exists. So I actually so I came up with a list of, uh, a list of multiple problems, just cross the board problems. Some of them are what you guys uh, explained, and when I tell the stories about the books, I'll explain what happened with the other ones too. It really is like just across the board stuff. I don't get, I'm not somebody who gets a lot of FOMO or doesn't buy books that I want at the price I want. So I think like one for sure, that's, that's the case. I wanted it for a certain price and it, it went off the, the rails there. So, uh, yeah. but I know we're not getting into that later. So uh, let's get, I, I actually almost put a foreign in my list, Rob. I, I was this close. There is a couple foreigns I'm looking for. There, As a uh, shout out to Rob, I was actually going to put in, one of those Wonder Woman forums because he loves to tease me about them. Hey, hey, let's tag Kyle. Look what I got. Hey, which, which is cool. But I just there... want, I, I just, he just needs to give up the secret of where they're at. Hey, <laughs> hey, Kyle. Psst, here, look. Here's a bone. Here's one. <laughs> you know, your wife's name is Nubia. She'll really like it. Here, Kyle. You know, I'll even, you know, don't worry, Rob. I'll even say, hey, look what Rob threw us. Look at the bone that Rob threw us. Yeah, Rob knows I'm looking for one too, so I didn't put that on the list because I don't, I'm not trying to look, drive up the market. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the chat. Uh, love the live chat, especially on the Saturday night shows. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you guys uh, make the shows fun. I say it every time. It's, it's a lot of fun when the chat is on fire. So we appreciate you guys, uh, all your live viewers, all the people that catch us on the replay. Thank you to all you guys too. Much love. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit that bell. Um, so you're notified of all the, the amazing shows that are on the network. Uh, so many good shows on this network. I think we've got nightly shows. Some shows have, mul or some days have multiple shows. So make sure you guys check all those out. So, all right. What do you say we get into uh, comic book reviews? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's start out with it. We're going to start with a good one, too. Oh. So one of the best books that uh, I read this week was Strange Academy. Um, I, I thought it was really, really good. And when we were kind of going over our, our reviews this week, I didn't think it was so good that I forgot about it. But uh, I, I remember at the end of our, our little ideas of which books to review and which books did we read, I went, oh, man, Strange Academy was really, really good. And one of the things that I love about Strange Academy is this Dor Dormammu's kid character. Uh, I really like the character. I think it's a, it's, it's a good um, – it, everything is about him is good. The way he looks, the idea of him, uh, him being, you know, the uh, son of Dormammu and, and having to work with Strange and all this crazy stuff. But uh, 
did uh did you uh what do you think kyle i really liked it you know what it was a fun read it was a good read it was just and you know and 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 i'll get into this with the future state stuff is one good thing about this is it wasn't a convoluted read it was very easy to read it was very easy to grab and grasp you didn't like it was just you know, each Scotty Young did a very good job at writing this this issue. Yeah, and, and not not only that, Umberto Ramos. I know we 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 you know you know give him a lot of shit on his Spider Man art sometimes, but I think he's been doing really good on Strange Academy. Oh no, it looks great. It looks it looks way better than when he was that the blocky Spider Man when he was doing that. Yeah, he did. This was really a surprising job. book. I actually wasn't reading this, even though I read a lot of Marvel, and. After reading the first one, I went back and read because you know we've got a couple, of, but I went back and read the whole run, right? So, and it actually turned out pretty good. Even this kissing scene with the absorption and the power thing, and how they're doing some of the academy stuff over the years with Marvel, you've seen a lot of the Cavani stuff like 25, 50% of it is good payoff, the rest of it is like, yeah, you know, you had the Wolverine stuff and stuff like that. This one was. Doctor Strange seems to be running on all cylinders. The art is really cool. The characters that they're having is good. The storylines don't seem as forced as some of these Academy ones have been before. So, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you recommended it because it turned out to be be a, a fun read. Obviously, I like the X books better this week, but that's just because I'm an X fan. So, um, but it was well, good. it was it was. Can we let's explain kind of what happened in this issue? Basically, uh, who, I forget this character's name. This girl's name. What's her name? Uh, the one that's kissing. Uh, Just Dormammu. go back up a page. They'll show you all. The oh names. yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Uh, Emily, Emily, and Doyle. Okay, so Doyle. I love how they gave him the name Doyle for Dormammu's son. Yeah, dude, but, that's and, and, yeah. Emily, I, I like this. You know, you know, kind of tugs at your heartstrings a little bit. You know, the, the first kiss, ever, the first awkwardness kiss. Yeah, yeah. The awkwardness, and and she goes to kiss him, and and something definitely goes wrong, and um it doesn't turn out right. And all of a sudden she is on fire. He's on, he's all messed up and, and she wakes up in the hospital and whatnot. And, and basically she doesn't know what's going on. And Dorma and Doyle is basically not in a good place. Right. And, uh, well, he's exhausted. There's nothing yeah. left in him. He's like, there's nothing left in him. Yeah. yeah. And, and at one point, uh, strange has to go and talk to this badass tiger God to do his little things. And, 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 and you know, uh, ask for another favor. He needs another favor. Um, and the, the tiger God is like, oh, I knew you would ask for another favor. It seems like strange is always asking for favors from these. From these well, with this too. So he's already saying that there's an offset and they know what the future is going to happen in the universe. So he's gone to him before to help him in certain elements. And he's going back. I mean, I just don't want to spoil. If people are trying to read the thing, but then he's no, going back. Spoiler now. away. Spoiler so he's away. Going, so, so he's already got, he's already given them like a bunch of like, uh, mystical help right and the only thing that their relationship teeters on and they're not friends the only thing it teeters on is that strange and him both know what the future is going to behold and it's this big darkness that's going to come out so he goes back to him again and he this guy just pretty much ridicules strange and it's like dude you're you're so terrible because they're not friends like he's like any of those other mystical creatures that they have a lot of times you see it not just here in marvel but in dc where they kind of like the pop of midnight characters and stuff like that where they go after each other and like you're terrible. You shouldn't be in the spell realm anyways. You think you're a supreme being and everything like that. And they have this back and forth. And again, he's saying, you're coming to me because pretty much like telling him he's worthless. And then Strange goes, yeah, but we both know the future. And you know as well as I do that like we might not be best friends, but we got to work together to get this done yes. and bring her back and stuff like that. And, and they do. They bring her back, of course, um, which is cool. But uh, the 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 interesting thing is when they go to check on Doyle, right? And I I love how uh, she's really scared about him, and and she's like, oh, I'm gonna go talk to Dormammu, and she's he's like, no, no, no. And I love how when they go into the Dormammu range uh, realm, it looks like the strange movie. I think that is really cool. Well, I thought it was cool that that's how they like everybody had the same thought. Just have them. You know, a dad will give life back to his son. Just do that. And then he, Strange was the only one that will, he had already warned, what's his name, like, the uh, voodoo, not to do it. Like, don't go there, man. It's not a smart idea, bro. And then, like, she just kind of grabbed the amulet to go and everything like that. And I assume that's where you're going with this. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, it basically, did, it wasn't a good idea, uh, basically, right? And they well, go no, check yeah. on. Yeah, because she he rolls her out. Then she then then if you go down two more panels, I think yeah. we get to it. So when she goes back, she goes to give him a kiss, 
and gives him back all his powers. And that was so freaking cool. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, what a great ending. Uh, I, you know, me, I'm a homer for this character. All of a sudden, I'm like, this character better not die. This is the best character in the book. And when she goes to give him that kiss and he pops back, what, that's what a like that would be a great piece of art to own right there. But this, uh, you got voodoo in there, Doctor Strange. They're 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 hugging each other, and she's that'd be just a cool second print cover. Oh yeah, doing. yeah. But my question is this: So did you take away from this that she absorbed a portion of his like life force and then could reattach it by touching him and kissing it back into her? Is that where we're all at mm -hmm. with this? Man, but does that does that exhaust? Because remember, he took. She took him up to what's his name, the tiger guy, to do something to her. So is that like going to be her thing now? She's like the reverse rogue. Like she can take power and then give power. Like that's kind of creepy. Now, I don't know yet, but I mean, it yeah, was it was damn sweet. And here's here's the cover for the next issue where she's. It looks like she's got some of the power left. Is that what she's saying right there? Where she's holding like an ember and it's on fire. I don't know what that means, but it's a cool cover. I'm well, really so looking forward to it. So the other thing too is like she might be able to still like that's what I'm saying she might be ha she might still have that power in her and now she can diverse do remember that 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 did come from his dad so like the life force for him originally came from his dad correct so like that means she has the power of Dormont in her and like that's kind of interesting you know what I yeah. mean yeah yeah what do you think about it. I think it's dope. I think it's uh, it's very interesting to see where they're going. I just hope they don't play off this whole rogue thing again because you remember that was like the kind of the rogue thing forever. Yeah, uh, I you just got to make it different. But I like it so far. Strange Academy is a good book, really mm -hmm. good book, and uh, it was a very good read. Yeah, so it was, very, very good stuff. Breath of fresh air from all the future state. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really right. like that she could put the power back because that was so a different from Rogue, who just takes it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it was going to end too. I didn't think we were going to get to see. Like, I thought it was going to be big cliffhanger. The cliffhanger wasn't going to be like, "How did she do it?" I thought the cliffhanger was going to be like, "How are they going to, you know, like what's going to happen with him getting his life force back or whatever?" And I was kind of like you said, Brian. I was really stoked, and I thought it was super cool, and it's great art too. When you see the fire lighter back up, like that's just super cool. So very good. Um uh x-men is next uh we had a bunch of x books come out this week uh let's start off with um the first one which is uh x-men number 17 i believe it was and this is like uh the first storyline if i remember correctly of um after the krakoa stuff and uh you got this really dope linnell francis u storm <laughs> cover i like linnell francis u um yeah his writing is solid patrick well, i agree 100 percent. Scotty young I'm a huge yeah fan of his art mm -hmm. but but his he write his, his art is his uh writing is solid. Yeah. Um, but uh so basically this X-Men stuff, it looks like it's it's taking place uh, in cosmic areas and you get you get to the Shi'ar stuff and um which is interesting, but <sighs> tell me this doesn't isn't really nineties X-Men esque, right? Oh, it's hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Is this Brett Booth? I think this might be Brett Booth. Is this what is this Brett Booth art? No, Brett Booth did something recently. But anyways, this is very uh, uh, 90s-esque. Um, do, do you think it's too soon to recycle or re, re kind of take go back to the 90s with the X-Men? I mean, that's what sold. That's what really made the big run. That's where a lot of the big you know books came from was that late 80s, 90s runs. Do you think it's too soon to go back to that and try and and hit that, that level again to, to get X-Men – you know, back up to, to that level. I got to be honest with you. This, this is right out of like the nineties and two, the early two thousands around 2005 ish and 2008. Like I really liked what they're doing with this and new mutants and that they're putting it at the same time. As you know, if you guys are reading these, you know that new mutants had dealt with this area, the space stuff exactly with the Shire and all that. They had done it earlier in their run and now it's transitioned over and they've started to bring in the, the X-Men team now into that run um, with it. I I personally like it, but that's because I like some of the stories and some of the characters, right? Um, yeah, this is Brett Booth art by uh, Brett Booth art, by the way. Thank you, uh, Bricks, uh, with the awesome avatar there. <laughs> I remember Brett Booth. Uh, he was here at a Comic Con right around when he was doing uh, Teen Titans, Titans with uh, you know when Norm was inking them. Norm Rapman, uh, yeah. And I remember he had all of his prints that he had done all his drawings on, you know, before they got, you know, with stack of them. 
And we were like, hey, and you know how usually those are like hundreds of dollars, depending on who is on which, you know, square on it or what's what's drawn on it. And I was like, hey, what's this? He's like, oh, I just got piles. He's all over my house. He's like, I don't know. What's a good price? How about 20 bucks? And we started ravishing it. Yeah. Real how cool is that? Like, like, and then the next time we seen him, he had him again. And I was like, ooh, he's like. Two hundred dollars. I was like, "Ah, oh, somebody must have talked to you about that." Then, uh. <laughs> like, because they were just going, and I guess I, someone had to have said something. I figured maybe Norm or someone was like, "Hey, man, it's got a real out. it's it, his his art in this has got a real Will Portacio type feel." Uh, who's a Will Portacio is a famous X Men artist um, that was in the the late 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 nineties, I believe, maybe mid nineties. He was around that time of. Um, uh, you know, after Jim Lee and stuff like that. Uh, but he, Will Spartacio killed it uh, back then. And this kind of reminds me of that type of art. But the only thing that I'm still weird about is the whole Gene Gray Cyclops thing. Like, I don't get it. Um, it's weird to me. I mean, I I, I like the Gene and, 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 and Scott Summers are back together, but I've always been an Emma Frost person. I thought the when Scott and Emma were together, I thought that relationship was perfect because Scott was always kind of like a like a hesitant kind of like that that hesitant leader. He's kind of like a pussy that every you know everybody says Scott's a pussy, and I get it. You know he kind of is, but Emma really made him not be like that. Like she would tell him, "Hey, come on, you're a badass. Do this." Uh, whereas with Gene, it doesn't feel like that, and and I I really. I don't like the whole Scott and Gene thing back together again. I don't know why that's just me, but it's but still going right, on. I think in this X book too, and you probably agree with this, they, they put storm front and center in a lot of the stuff, right? Like, so I'm, I agree a hundred percent. I'm not a huge fan of Scott and I definitely, I, even with the Emma Frost relationship, I felt like they were kind of pushing it too much because he was that weak. But with that being said, you know, they're just, they're not pulling Iceman. Iceman to be a hero, you know, Beast isn't taking over. It really is the Storm show, which is kind of cool. And I think, you know, the reason why you have to have some of the summers there is because I think they're, I mean, they've already brought back one, but I think he's going to have a big part. Uh, one of the Summers boys is going to have a real big part here coming up. Yeah. And well, I, let's get into that a little bit because that's kind of where they take us in this. You know, you go to the Shi'ar home world. They're, ha they're having some trouble there. And I forget this character's name. What is this character's name? Um, Smasher. The Smasher character. I'm not too familiar with the Smasher character, but uh, that's that's the character's name. And they she's kind of like a, a – she's on the Shi'ar planet uh, as an X-Men, like Emissary. And uh, they go to the planet. What's that? She's like one, yeah. She's like one of the also protectors too. Yeah, protection. yeah. So they go there, and uh, you know they're having problems. And look at this art; that's beautiful. That's just some beautiful stuff there. But I like how Jean Grey when when they say, "Have you have you checked their minds yet?" And they're like, "Oh yeah." And Jean's like, "No, not like I can." And she just runs through them and checks all their minds and checks everything. And she basically finds out which one is the traitor and. Uh, you know, you got good old Deathbird back in the in the game, uh, old school character, um, and uh, they basically you know take out that traitor, and you can see it's uh, it's some sh shapeshifter type type thing, and it, he's under the the lead of what is this guy? I don't even know who this guy is. Some big new big bad. Um, do you remember this guy's name? No, I can't remember. It was irrelevant. Okay. He's just, I mean, he, I actually like it was, he's such a makeup. Like this is where you guys are talking about nineties and stuff. They yeah. literally threw so many things together with him. They even gave him like that hammer that the accuser had kind of, and stuff like that. It's very interesting. And if you guys aren't up on this too, do remember that like the it's, well, we'll talk. Are we going to talk about the throne room and who's on the? Yeah, the yeah, we're going to get to that. So basically, uh, you know, the X Men have to show up on this planet and they got to go save uh, the princess, the Shi'ar princess, the new Shi'ar princess, and we'll get into that in a second. And they go and save her from this, from this character, and you know, do their thing. And they go back, and this they they went they they do this this jumping from the worlds, right? The Smasher character, I guess, is supposed to be talking to Can uh, Sunspot. And I don't know who this character, this little baby character is that's hanging off a cannonball. If anybody in the chat can answer this for me, I apologize. Um, I haven't been following with with every X-Men book lately, but I just don't know who this young baby character is here that's kind of hanging off everybody. But His name should be the Freeloader. 
Yeah, Cannonball and Sunspot are, are, I guess, living together, which is kind of funny. And they have their little thing, and they say, "Oh, they need to go help out." So they eventually go, and you end. It ends with the princess, who uh, Marco uh, reminded me is the daughter, the engineer daughter of uh, Xavier and Lalandra. Uh, in the Gambit the, Rogue book, yeah, yeah, from the Mister and Mrs. X uh, series, which was a Gambit and Rogue series, which is interesting. So she's like an engineered clone. Is she an engineered clone of them both? Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, it, so she's so she's dead already, and they're using like the DNA portion to engineer it with Xavier and her to have a kid, and then yes, and that, that's what she should be is the combination of the two. So she, okay, yeah. so she's a combination of two. So that's interesting, right? So mm-hmm. she's on the throne, and you can see her guardian uh, as as back in the past, uh, Lalandra had his name was Guardian, right? Yeah, yeah, Guardian. Yeah. So I, her guardian you, is Death Lord. The- this clone marco how do you a, a dead person that got cloned so this is even this is interesting Come on this now. Is very interesting so <laughs> and i have a crazy theory about this one and maybe if somebody abrams would have done this it would have been a little bit better so uh for those that haven't been up on it's a new new reborn reborn marvel blah 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 thing that they did the interesting part too is about uh uh dark for um what's her name deathbird 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 with gabriel summers they don't say it's his kid, but she at one point had a a, a baby that uh, they were that after he disappeared. For those that don't know, he disappeared into a vault with Black Bolt. At one point, they were supposed to have both died. We know for a fact they didn't die because in this series in ten, they obviously bring him back, kind of or whatever. You can bring everybody back. Nobody's dead anymore. Um, the finer point is that she had a kid. We haven't seen the kid yet, but the kid's a combination of a mutant and a shair and. By the way, the person sitting on that bench is supposedly a clone of those two things too. And it just so happens that since uh, Vulcan is back, guess who the Emperor technically is? Gabriel Summers, because he never lost it. And if he's the Emperor, guess who he married? Her. She's Desperate, the Empress. Yeah. Yeah. And she's now the guardian for whoever's sitting on that bench and she's taking care of it. It's very interesting what route they'll go to uh, if it's going to be the actual clone of Xavier or if they're actually going to make it the kid between the two because we know that they started off that Gabriel Summers story and then right around 10 or 11, I think, they stopped it uh, because he he blew somebody out and they're going to need help. Either way, Storm at this point uh, helps save this girl who, if she has a combination of mutant powers and the strength because she's got those talents and everything like that, I'm thinking maybe like, you know, there's something fishy about it. Why, how she was playing prisoner and everything in this book, either she's hiding her powers for some reason, or they're trying to get storm to an act where she, they can go back ask, ask storm to bring in the X-Men and help fight uh, this Imperial battle and get him out of the debt. The debt thing was weird. I don't know why they brought it up so much in the beginning, but you know, they don't bring up stuff for no reason. So like those are, it's very interesting what they're doing here. I like that. They're going back to it. Like I've always said, I love, uh, you know, the War of Kings, uh, Emperor Valcon, that type of storyline. So I'm glad to see that they might be getting back to this with the X-Men books. Um, well, yeah, I mean, something that, that you brought up was um, at the end, they, they, they leave on this cliffhanger and, and uh, Storm helps, you know, to a point where this, uh, this princess says, as for you, Storm of Krakoa, vanquisher of a rebellion and friend of the throne, I owe you a debt. And she says, and in the coming days, should you need anything of me, feel free to collect at any time. And Storm's kind of got a look on her face like, hey, uh, I think I know what I want to ask. And I th- I have no clue. So anybody in the chat, if you guys have any ideas what this means, if if there's something that Storm is, you know, you think she's going to ask for or what's going on here, I don't get this. It's kind of interesting. So, though. But Kakor is going to be under attack soon by an alien species. And it's something that Volcom had started. And we know for a fact that the Kree have already come to the aid and so are the scrolls. The Sheer has not. So I wonder if the favor that she's going to ask is for them to come down there. And I wonder if it's all just my thing is like, maybe it isn't because I'm just very like, oh, are you guys doing, you're doing what you normally do, a little conspiracy here. But I wonder if it's all a setup. You know what I mean? So Storm's going to ask for something, but technically it's a setup and that's what they want to have happen. Go back to that first picture up top there, Brian. 
keep going to the, all the way to the top top the top it, top yeah right there now see that picture is really unbelievable because as we all know people who sit on the throne read wizard magazine when they're sitting on the throne <laughs> and she is clearly not that's a good observation solo <laughs> yeah it really would have enhanced this this book a lot in that in that right there with that being said i also enjoyed that book a lot it does have a lot of nostalgia to it you know it does have that feeling of the 90s and the early 2000s when i'd have to say that x-men in the last couple decades those were their last two good portions right those are the last well, two that years. and new Mu new mutants has been really good too new mutants has been really good and new yeah. mutants was a tie-in earlier to this so they were dealing with this year earlier on which is kind of nice well, they're back. Uh, this the new uh, New Mutants. This is New Mutant. Next book, New Mutants fifteen, um, where they're uh, back on Krakoa, and uh, it's Magic, uh, who I absolutely adore. I think she's a great character that needs to be more important, and I'm glad they're making it more important. Has a, a young team of New Mutants that she's kind of training, and uh, um, I was a little lost on this one just because I haven't been following much of uh, the New, new Mutant stuff lately. Um, which I'm glad uh, uh, Marco has. And is this Quentin Co uh, Choir right here? Yeah. I yeah, like that it. character. I've yeah, always he's liked He's in a him. couple too. So it's kind of funny. Across these X books, they're bringing about, like Majik shows up on a lot of them. Some of your favorite characters and some of your favorite enemies show across. In this right now, they're, they're trying to get synergy between groups and they they have a bunch of different new, they even say it in the book, it's new mutants in small, not capitalization as a team. And they're trying to get them all to work together and stuff. Unfortunately, they seem to be adolescents and fighting a lot. You got to remember there's like regrowth too. So they've re reduced some of these ages in a lot of people with, with that we've seen already, which is nice. I like to see it kind of get revived. And, but either way, so so one of the groups burnt the other groups like house down pretty much. One of the three groups, one of them. Yeah, Lord of the Flies type shit. Yeah, yeah kind of, yeah. So basically, um, the interesting stuff about this story is this character right here. And uh, I I'm in the in the dark about this character. Marco, maybe you can talk a little bit about who this Osmar, character is. I can, absolutely. And J.J. Maxwell says in the comment, not a big fan of this art. I think it's gorgeous. See, I'm not either, but I think there's a reason why. And if you looked at the original runs on this, it started to change right there. So this character, Brian, do you have the picture of her, what she originally looked like? I sent it to you late in the Hangouts. Uh, she, originally was, she originally was like a normal girl human being. She ended up um, accidentally killing her, her parents. She has like these nightmare things. And when you see her originally when they're introducing her, that's why she looks so funky. But like she sees stuff in a different realm. Like they'd even do like regular panels all the way around her and her in this type of like, I don't know, weird world stuff. She's battling right here. Um, That's how Solo sees stuff. Battling. Yeah. She's practicing. I, I, I see it in a different realm. I pick out the little nuances. Uh, <laughs> Natasha Rapina yeah. is her name. That's her, um, yeah. Yeah, Tosh, yeah. yeah, but so anyways, so uh, yeah, that's her. So she had, ch she had changed herself. It's very interesting because she had changed herself into that karma character to look like that because of how she was trying to fight the nightmare, but it's what she looked like in the nightmare. And I'm not a hundred percent yet that she, this is how she sees herself and not everybody else completely sees her as this. And I'll tell you why later. Well, the so important she, thing is that we got Farouk back in the game. We did. And um, I, you know, we all know about, uh, the shadow King and Farouk and all that stuff. But the interesting thing is that Farouk is a teacher here, right. Of one of the teams. Um, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, the, the reason why I like the art so much is it reminds me of the old school Sienkiewicz stuff. You can see that he, whenever he draws Farouk, he does like the Sienkiewicz scratches and that I, that's a lot of respect right there because Farouk was such a big Sienkiewicz storyline, right? The Shadow King and yeah. everything. So, so I, they I find like him in a cavern though, and they he they think he's just like somebody trying to help them out, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Also, a very fine point about this: they've rewritten the Shadow King now. So originally with Farouk the Sh and the Shadow King were one entity together. Um, it was like one mutant type being. They have established now that he is a mutant. Farouk is a mutant. And the Shadow King is actually a completely different entity, which is interesting. It's an interesting turn on it. I'm yeah. But the other interesting thing is that Dokken and uh, Honey Badger are, you know, um, hanging out. And uh, here we have Dokken trying to um, hang out with uh, uh, 
what's her name? Uh, Akiro? Is that her name? Gabby. No, no, Akiro, this chick. Oh, trying yeah, to get yeah, it on. Yeah, 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 and and yeah. Gabby kind of. Oh, uh, Gabby is one, yeah. yeah, Gabby kind of uh, is the third wheel. And um, Dokken basically says, hey, you got to you gotta kind of get, get me some space here. And Gabby goes out and kind of joins the teams. And she thinks that she's, uh, you know, better than she is. And, you know, kind of like that old that old trope of uh, she's the most important one. But they're they're building characters here within the teams, right? Um, which is 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 kind of cool, and I, I like where they're going with it. It'll be interesting to see what they do with uh, Farouk and everything. But this is the thing that just I get tired of this of this whole thing with Rain and her always being sourpuss. I guess I mean she did lose her kid. I get it. Yeah, and- but. You know how often are we going to go through this? Uh, but look at look at how much Sienkiewicz there is in this art right here. Like that is pure that Sienkiewicz syndrome. Pure Sienkiewicz right there, just great. Really good stuff, man. So, yeah, I mean, they, so they do all the backstories there to tell. You know, they're they're reincorporating the early days of a lot of new mutant stuff, especially when Strong Boy stabbed her son and yeah. all that type of stuff over there, which was kind of cool to see the throwback art in there. Strong, that was a, a strong guy. Yeah, Guido. We know. Yeah, but well, yeah, it was a good book. It was it was very good, and uh, it'll be interesting to see um, you know where it goes. I'm I'm all for it. I'm a huge fan of uh, magic and a lot of those characters and all that stuff. But there was a lot of good X Men books out. Uh, X Force uh, wasn't too bad either. Um, the, there was just a lot of good stuff. But one one book before real quickly, we quickly, if I could. Yeah, so yeah. yes, yeah, George or, uh, Lopez, Darth Lopez. They are calling her Scout now. Gabby is now known as Scout, which is interesting. Shadow King tied to the Null or to Null. I don't think so. I think that um, Karma and Shadow King are in the same realm, and everybody else might not be in it. There was a point where they're at the bar and something went down, and it seemed very like she's having a bad dream, like she's in a nightmare realm. Um, but yeah, that's all I have on that. Just sorry, I'm answering the questions from the viewers, which I know you told me not to do. Um, all right. So yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Um, all right. So the next book before we get into too much uh, uh, future state stuff, and and I wanted to talk a little bit. Kyle, did you have a chance to read Amazing Spider-Man 58? No, I didn't get to it this time. Uh, have you been reading? Have you been keeping up on Spider-Man lately? No, it's been rough. It's been, it's been really rough, it's man. It's been rough. It's, it's, like, been it's, rough. it's really hit or miss lately. And so I'll try to read one and yeah, this one will be okay. And then you'll read the next one. You're like, ah, and I didn't even get to it. I was like, you know what? I think these ones with the track record of Amazing Spider-Man right now, I figured I'd go other places. <laughs> yeah. I like the this negative character, Mr. Negative character. I like uh, the way he looks and, and everything. And I think it's be interesting, but it's kind of uh, interesting that he's hanging out with Aunt May and she's kind of bringing him back to health and all that stuff. And I just like the way that character looks. I think he's a dope character. The suit, the black and white suit and the, and the uh, negative, negative color variant on him. I think it's just cool stuff, man. But it's kind of interesting. He's, he's chilling with Aunt May and she's trying to, you know, convince him that he's, um, you know, worth, worth something you can tell he's uh super bummed out but it's kind of cool i like it and um so there's that and and they kind of go into a little bit uh about this new character that i guess peter is with i don't know who this character is i i'm so lost on all this stuff with norman (laughs) and um kindred and uh, harry being kindred and norman coming back and and it was kind of interesting when this is, uh, I guess, Harry's wife and son, right? This is Normie, and he goes and finds the the new, you know, flyer, goblin flyer, yeah. and uh, Norman shows up at the door, and Peter and him almost go at it, and you know, it kind of ends on a on a, a cliffhanger type stuff. I don't know it. It just this whole kindred thing I don't like, but I do like the Mister Negative stuff. Um, it's not that bad, but. I don't know. Kingpin. I know Matt's really into this and uh, it was, you know, I kind of wanted to bring it up because Matt was so into it, but it just, I don't know. We'll see Uh, if they, if they maybe play a little bit better on this Mr. Negative character and and grow on them. I think it'll be cool, but. Kind of seems like they're really recycling that whole, you know, Norman Osborn and and Green Goblin, Hobgoblin situation with him and his son now. And his wife. I don't know. If they, 
I don't know. Seems like another recycle. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's what bad comics do. Well, not bad comics, but <laughs> comic creators who maybe aren't, you know, as good at uh, putting in as much effort. You know, they recycle old storylines. But sure. the reason, one of the reasons why I did want to bring this up is because, um, you know, the, the second printing for Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 55 is coming out, which is the red second printing variant, which is cool. I feel like this one's cool. Every every other one seems lazy to me. It seems really lazy. The the just changing the black and white from white to black as seems lazy. And But I like this one. This one isn't too bad. I didn't get any of them. I didn't get uh, the first print. I didn't get the second print. And I know everybody's going crazy. I, are these still selling decently? Is the first print still selling at all, Marco? Do you know? I don't know. I, you know, those are ones that you put in your box and you hope if you got them for ratio or, or you got them for cover, you put them in your box and you hope in a little bit they go out for the nine eight screening and they come back and then they're still at the same price. This one I, too, I I actually ordered a couple more of this than I did the other two because this one I actually enjoyed. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean that's it. That's not even worth it. You know, you know 30, like, 30 bucks isn't bad. Yeah. I mean, uh a 30, yeah, 30 yeah. 5, 25, that's that's really good for this cover for still to still be selling. Yeah, I um, know, but when you know, when you put it in the like send out your nine eight shipments, like you have there's a certain price point we have to be at before we send them out. So for us, I'll probably just sell those raw. One fifty well, for a nine eight, that's not bad. It's well, not I bad kind of at all. The whole community really spoke out. I mean I Personally, I love the black and white and the white and black and the reverse. And I, I think they're really cool. I think it's a really good idea. I do especially love the red. But the community really spoke out and and was hoping that the spider would have been blue. Just to, And I read that throughout a, a bunch of the community and threads and comments That's on cool. shows. And that would have really, I think, set this off. I think the community is actually 100% right is how this would have really played on the red and blue Spider-Man colors. They could have left the, the circle of the eye white and put that spider blue. And it would have really tied this whole book. I, I mean, it would have tied it together like none other. And they just sold, you know, another 4,000 of these on top. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's good. I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying. The blue spider would have been something cool. I don't know if you need to change. Don't worry. They'll come out with another one. So maybe you'll get it next time. They'll probably come I out did. With I did read Daredevil this week, and Daredevil wasn't bad. I see everybody in the in the chat talking about Daredevil. Daredevil wasn't bad. Um, the only thing about Daredevil that uh, was kind of weird for me is is still the whole with the whole thing with uh, Matt in prison and he's still wearing a mask. Like what the fuck? That's kind of weird. <laughs> kind of stupid. But in jail again, a lawyer in jail again. Yeah, like how many times are we gonna have Daredevil in jail? Um, but I get it. It is what it is. So. Um, all right. Uh, what do you say, Kyle? You want to get into some some uh, some future state goodness, huh? Uh, I don't know if you want to call it goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we could start with. Uh, what do you want to start detective? with? Detective. We'll start dark with detective. dark detective. All right. Let me get dark detective. Dark detective was good. Um, One of the really, better uh, ones of this week. Yes, I agree. I agree. Wasn't bad. It fi we finally got the answer to uh, Bruce. What's going on with Bruce, right? Yep. Dope cover. It is one of the better covers, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. there honestly, when I was in the comic book store this week, too, this was one of there. A guy randomly walked in and was like, because I we're talking about all the books and we were sitting there for a while. Then he goes, What do you guys think of the series? And there's two guys, one a Marvel reader, one a DC reader, and they actually said that this obviously Teen Titans and a couple other books that we'll get to probably were pretty good out of this so they were still enjoying it they had already read the second one of this so there is some good feedback on some of these books the, yeah. i think the best part of this at this issue is the whole like first half of it so the whole first half it shows uh it shows bruce and it shows peacemaker one come up and he and he surprises bruce and there's kind of this this fight and what it is is he's and, and then Bruce is trying to get away and he's they're they're close to the harbor and he's trying to get away and and he's getting shot and he jumps into the water and it, he's going through his mind he's going through this episode of he's he's dying he feels himself like he's dying and he's going through it it's going black it's you know it's 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 this is the end and all of a sudden you know this bomb goes off and he comes out and he realizes nope it's not the end. Well, the crazy part was also that 
there he jumps in and he sees this this body floating next to him, right? I know, like it, like like they threw an old body in the water for well, yeah, like it was mopping. there already. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, okay, here's my out. I can let this body float to the surface, and they'll think it's me, and they'll just shoot shoot the body. And that was, I mean, they kind of had to do something there. I get it. That's kind of mm -hmm. like uh, the MacGuffin or whatever they call that. They kind of throw something weird in there, but. I thought it was interesting how he how he kind of says uh, death staring back at me. One of you know he and you think it's him dying is staring back at him. No, it's actually a dead dude. One of many one of Gotham's many John Does, which was kind of interesting. And that body kind of comes. He pushes that body to the surface and lets Peacekeeper shoot that body. But as you say, Kyle, like what Peacekeeper didn't realize is that Bruce had stuck a grenade to him, like a sticky yep. grenade in Halo, right? Stuck a sticky grenade to him and and uh, game over. But I thought that was really cool, Kyle, about how you explain he's dying. You know, he's facing death. This is a really cool scene. This would be some good artwork to have. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's probably my favorite part is that whole thing. It's you know, it's you, you know, he's the just the way he's looking at it. Just it's it's this is death finally looking at me. It's I knew this was always going to happen. Now it's it's right here. And yeah. I, you know, and after that, it was, it was still pretty good. You know, after he got out of the water, your eyes, okay, I'm, you know, it's, I'm good. And he's, he's actually like almost relieved thinking, okay, now everybody thinks I'm dead. It was like, you could tell, like, I actually like the after part. Cause like they had to explain what he would do. And that was kind of cool. Like the whole dead body thing. Fine. I, look, I, take <laughs> it with a grain of salt. What I say, I'm not a Batman fan. With that being said, the second half of this book, I thought it was kind of interesting how they were doing stuff in the second part of this book. They, they, the tone of it was they did a little bit of humorish type things in there. Some stuff that's really happening around now. Um, this was good. His roommate and how they called him Jeff. That I just kept rolling. Every, I think I'm gonna call bats from now on Jeff. That's his new name, Jeff. Hey Jeff. I just that's like it. I'm... He's got this weird. Jeffy. Uh, he's got this this a safe house. A conspiracy a... dude. With a tinfoil hat type of conspiracy. That's Jedi theory. Johnson right there, dude. It's Jedi Johnson. He even looks like Jedi. Where's Jedi? <laughs> What's up, Jedi Johnson? Make sure, <laughs> hey, make sure you check out last week's Star Wars. Jedi Johnson took it over. He killed it, man. He did a great job. That is Jedi Johnson. Go ahead. But yeah, this is good. I actually like this because what would you do? You would change your name, right? You'd go live with somebody off the grid. Um, yeah, it's somebody he's, and it's obviously somebody that he's been building up to for a while because they well they know him as jeff and he pays him in cash and he's got a room set up so it's it's somewhere that he's he goes to often enough that it's not a big deal that he just shows up right but this is the thing that i have problem with dc all the time who the hell doesn't know who bruce wayne is especially in gotham I mean, that I'm guy, talking, this guy that, who's afraid yeah. of aliens. <laughs> hey, man, I'm afraid of aliens, too, and I don't watch the news, so maybe. Um, the interesting hey, part, <laughs> here, here's his uh, his bunker area, and it's all super high-tech. <laughs> Jedi Johnson, I didn't offer it. <laughs> Jedi, you need to go buy this art right here, brother. You need to go buy that art. Oh, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> But it was kind of cool, and then they showed they showed his little setup and what he's got going on, and uh, you know that's how Batman thinks, that's how Bruce thinks. But this was kind of cool. Like, uh, what's what's this about? I didn't get this. I didn't understand this. Who's this chick? Is this Oracle? What is this? Who's this? yeah? I think it's Oracle, and I think she, and it looks like a, a little cat match. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought, I thought it was funny what she, the the, sister, the daughter said at this point where she's like, that person's an idiot. I thought it was just somebody random because she was like, it's just some idiot taking pictures. And she was like, they're a moron. They don't even know who who or what I work for. So it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So I didn't take it as somebody important. I took it either as a peon or just some random person. Oh, okay, to, some random person. Yeah, because she in. would know who Bruce was if she saw yeah. him. Mm -hmm. It almost yeah. looks like she's holding glow sticks. I like how Bruce steals the dude's uh the motorcycle. <laughs> he's always got a chopper. Yeah. Willie's, Willie. yeah. Um that was kind of cool. But you know, they 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 let everybody know that he's still badass Batman, which is uh what we want, right? But I think the the coolest part of I'll be awesome, I'll be honest, the coolest part about this series to me wasn't the first half, 
it was the second half and this Red Hood story. Oh yeah, where Red Hood's like a like a for hire guy that's working for the magistrate. And he's yeah, he's and working he, for he's the, like so the magistrate. He's like a contract person. Yeah, so they went and the magistrate went and talked to a bunch of uh, you know masks as they call them or heroes or villains. You know what? Whoever they, a mask could could be a hero or a villain. It's one mm-hmm. of the people that wears a mask and goes and does this shit. So the magistrate went ten and. and and said to the masks that were out there, if you come work for us, you're okay. But if we catch you with a mask on and still trying to do this shit and you're not working for us, you're done. Like you're either dead or we're going to bring you in. And so they hired these people uh, that wanted to work for them and still be, you know, masks. And one of them is Jason Todd and he's, uh, you know, doing the Red Hood moniker. And you can't really tell if he's doing it to be on the inside and still kind of, you know, be a good guy or if he's gone full bad guy again. Um, there's always been that kind of thing with Jason Todd where he, mm-hmm. you can't, he walks that line. You can't really tell. As with, Whereas with Damien, Damien doesn't walk the line. He's a good dude that uses – he's got he'll use bad shit to get what he wants done. Like he's just not going to take – He's not going to mess around. Whereas Jason Todd, you just can't tell. And Jason Todd's out searching, and he's searching for old school vigilante. Remember this character, vigilante? Uh, I think it was like Detective Annual was his first appearance, and that was a hot book for a little bit of time uh, because I think Suicide Squad. But he's out there, and it's kind of got that ghost in the shell. Uh, su- uh, uh, mm-hmm. more- and he finds vigilante and they take him in and the magistrate takes him and they're they're kind of making the magistrate's people are kind of making fun of masks and this and that and uh Jason Todd gets another alert that there's another mask out there and they have to go find out who it is and it turns out it's a guy wearing the old school red hood helmet right and uh he goes out to find out who it is and they 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 go to look for him and he goes into a bar and he, he looks for him. He sits down at a bar and he wants a drink and they're like, not here. And who do you know shows up? Ravager. I've yep. always been a big fan of Ravager, right? Ravager is a cool character. I dig chicks with white hair and she's a dope character. Um, I love the Teen Titans run that they brought her in. I, that was one of my favorite all time Teen Titans run um, back in the day. And uh, I just like the character. She's a cool character. But what I like even more about this version of the character is that her and Jason Todd are an item. I think that's kind of cool. And she's like, you know, giving them shit like, Hey, not mm-hmm. even goodbye. Uh, you know, you, you could have at least said hello. And he doesn't say anything. She goes, Oh, I'll take my mask off then. So you know who I am, you know? <laughs> and, uh, it's just, it's just funny, you know, like really, um, sexual kind of tension, tension going on. Yes. And I love that. I love that. Especially, uh, with, with, uh, DC Titans characters. I always love the sexual tension, kind of like with Dick Grayson and Starfire, or Dick Grayson and anybody really, you know. Um, but really, Starfire. But this is uh, a, just some more cool stuff. I, I like these two characters, and I think they're they're doing something good with them. But the thing about Ravager is that she plays no games. She'll just fuck anybody up. And I love how she, when she says, uh, oh, daddy problems, you know, we're similar and we both got daddy problems. Yes. You know? And, and Red, Red, Jason Todd's like, Batman's not my dad. And she's like, yeah, sure he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> But the art wasn't – the only problem with this is I think the art could have been a little bit better for this part. Um, it wasn't terrible, but it just – it could have been better. I just – I think if you're going to have like sexual tension and stuff, you got to make the characters look a little bit sexy. That's just me. Um, it just doesn't look that way, right? It looks yeah. – Looks like Charlie Brown. Um, yeah. But anyways, it's kind of cool. And they go find that character, the guy running around with the red hood thing. And he goes to, to stop him and, you know, save him, you know, just to hurt him. Dude. Yeah. He's just some dude, but Ravager shows up and slices him in, <laughs> in half. half. It's awesome. Slices Damn. him in half. With zero fucks to give. No, zero she, fucks to give. She mauled him. She Darth mauled him. Yep. <laughs> and he takes the helmet off and it's just a kid trying to get food for his mm-hmm. family. And I don't know. It's, it's interesting. And they need to go find a uh, mad hatter because it's mad hatter technology. And she jumps on with him and says, I know where mad hatter lives. Giddy up. And I just, I thought that was funny. And the ends with them finding mad hatter and mad hatters, a, a corpse and he gets a mask alert and the mask alert is for himself. So we'll see where that goes. But, it wasn't a bad little story. I think it's Joshua Williamson, so 
I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of him coming up soon. So I think, uh, I think he's a good writer and I, I think uh, we're going to, be, like I said, we're going to be seeing a lot of his writing soon. So yeah, a lot of Joshua Williamson stuff coming up. Uh, and maybe we need to try and get Joshua Williamson on the show. Hint, hint. If anybody knows, hint, uh, hint. yeah, drop a line to Joshua Williamson. Uh, we would love to have him on the show. All right. Um, all right. So another book that was uh, future state Aquaman and uh, oh. yeah, this one was rough. So, okay. I'll give a quick rundown of Aquaman is, so Jackson Hyde is Street now Hawk Aquaman. Trash. Yes. <laughs> and he's <laughs> kind of teamed up and he's kind of the protector, kind of the overseer, kind of the guard of Andy Curry, which it's Arthur and Rose's teen daughter. And it's kind of weird because all of a sudden they're like chilling in the ocean. And they just all of a sudden they're just like everything's all right. Then all of a sudden they're just like somewhere else like with no yeah. rhyme or reason to it all of a sudden they're just in like a different like dimension or different like world or something yeah just for no a- obvious reason there was no i don't know if that's going to be later in the story i don't know if it's- it must have went back in time because you can see he's kind of older here and he's younger here but it just i'm with you man it it was really off um it didn't make a lot of sense to me the whole Andy Curry thing and and him being Aquaman and then I don't know I just maybe yeah. I'm not following Aquaman because Aquaman has been really bad but it seems like they're really doing a good uh, their best to make this guy look like Jason Momoa they did really try but I mean so what happens is is Andy Curry should gets like like this thing comes out like tears her apart and this, they come and they actually he gets like captured and put in prison. And I don't, he, he, and he's, you know, and they're, they're, and what it's, what it is is they're actually, he's actually deciding to talk to these people for the first time in years after he's been captured. And he's kind of talking about, it and he, you know, he realizes that they are very advanced and they've known how to like drain his powers. And somehow he gets like this decision or he figures out something to where like he can not <laughs> like where like he can get his power back kind of. And, and it kind of just ends with him like fucking the leader up and he's just walking out. And obviously Andy is somewhere in the water back somewhere and he's going to go back and get her. That's kind of yeah. how I took it. Weird stuff. It was weird. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. No, it was kind of all over the place. The art was good. I'll give it that. The art wasn't bad. Better than other ones. It was a lot better than a lot. I mean, look at that. That, That's pretty gorgeous right there, to be honest. Tearing her leg off and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't terrible, but uh, I just, I don't know, man. After after the boys and how they played the deep in there, I just, it's hard to look at Aquaman at all anymore, right? But yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It wasn't that great. I mean, the art, like like we said, the art's good. The story's kind of weird. I'm hoping over the next issue or two, it starts to make sense. Yeah. I don't know. This one was, you know, both of the Batman Superman stuff was kind of weird too. I, I, I just, the, the Batman Superman stuff was a little off to me. Uh, this, this character, like what the hell was this? This character was Weird. So what's happening is they're finding this thing and this little, and they can put it on. And what it is, it's it's there's all this surveillance equipment coming around, and nobody wants to really be known. So they're using these to transform into something else. Like this kid here is like transformed into like you know into a goat, and then like everybody has one, and it's, it's made so it makes it hard for the surveillance to. And it's almost like a drug. And it's kind of just spreading. It's it, it's already spread through Gotham, and now it's, you know, it's uh, it's made its way, and like you know, they're talking. They're like, I think it's like uh, it's it's made its way, and Superman didn't even know about it, and Batman's like, all they didn't know about it's it. Gotham, because Gotham's where it's producing. It was pretty cool yeah. because what they did here was kind of something that Brian K. Vaughn did in like one of his online books, where it's like if everybody's monitoring how you disguise yourself. In super in Metropolis, they're using it. This guy, this kid, was using it to try to be popular to tell a joke. But in Gotham, they're using it to disguise themselves so they can fight the magistrates. 
because it will it messes up the face recognition. Mm -hmm. The only problem is the drug that does it creates like a side effect, and the side effect is that you have certain parts, and when you get to the end, you figure out why. Like it'll just start producing. Well, no matter what. Yeah, basically what the kid's kind saying. Of your to emotion. Him is, yeah, it's got side effects that whenever he gets nervous or anything, the horns and the goat face shows back up, even with the with the drug, with the uh, administration, the drug, um, what do they call that thing that administers it, with that taken off. Um, so sometimes when I'm nervous, I get a horn too. <laughs> My palms get sweaty, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, more Superman, Batman stuff, but. This whole thing, what what was going on with these guys? Where what are these guys? The magistrates, right? They okay, were... yeah, I don't know. They don't are these? Is this magistrate? DC confuses the heck. It out does. Of me. It's really Many confused. Words. There's, there's it, like, if I want to read a book, I'm going to read a book. I'm not going to read a comic. You know what I mean? Like, and I like to read novels, but I don't like novels in my comic books. The continuity yeah. is really off. It's just everything's so off. You don't know what time period it takes place in or anything. And basically, uh, you know, they go and they, they're trying to figure out everything. They come to this uh, Mr. Toad guy. I did like this, though. This yeah, Mr. Toad okay. guy mm -hmm. was kind of cool. And he was the leader of the False Face Society. And He's the guy that pretty much came up with that plug drug thing, pretty much. Yes. And uh, I don't know. I like that character. I thought it was kind of cool. And his um, daughter was the one that had the his his daughter thinks he's dead too by the yes. way. Yeah. It's Throg. But he's got this he's going to give him one of these things and and he's got a kryptonite knife and he stabs Superman. Scalpel. What? It's a scalpel. A kry kryptonite scalpel and yep. he stabs Superman with a kryptonite scalpel. Um, and that's where it ends. So where did professor pig get a kryptonite scalpel? Yeah. So it's, it's, I just, it feels so bad there. Oh, I forgot that. I didn't realize that was professor pig. What? Marvel, Thor frog characters. It's it's in this. I, I don't know if these like this, uh, a couple of these, a couple of these books this week, I'm going to say is, they're very calm. I don't know if they're trying too hard. I don't know if they're, if since it's not a long run, they're trying to get through as much as they can. So it's very, so it's making it very hard to read. Yeah. But I'm, See, not, that, I'm not 100% sure. I think you're right. That was when, when I was saying we were talking to Guy and everybody was hesitant even about suggesting what DC, like which one of these future states to step in. Cause he's like, oh, it's a mini. So it'd be great. What book should I step into? And where you see the X Men, which we reviewed earlier. And you could step into Sword of X. Yes, they all cross over. It's a little bit confusing at certain points, but the storylines are pretty. I mean, Marauders is great. Like they have them pretty down how they're doing them. This, I had told both of you after reading these, like, guys, I, I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. It's too, I don't understand it. And I'd have to go back and read that. It feels like I have to go back and read thousands of comic books just to catch up to read one mini event, man. Like, I don't. <clears throat> Anyways, sorry. I don't. Yeah, want to I, I agree. It, it's it's their this run right here was a little rough. Well, the the other book on that I, I'm really don't want to get into because it was kind of rough too. Was the Superman versus Imperious Lex? I hate y'all uh, for making me read this book. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> along this along with um, Legion of Superheroes. I mean, oh I, no, Garth. I couldn't get. Super, I, couldn't I will get say this. It. I will say this about Legion of Superheroes. Legion of Superheroes did get better at the end, um, but it was – Kyle, you was 100% right. And when Kyle was telling me, he's like, dude, this is Brian Bendis, and it's super Brian Bendis wordy. And it was just – Because it's art like you're, was, you're – Yeah, it's terrible. But it got better towards the end. It was weird. It was weird. It was like there was a, a, a switch. Um, That's what I'm saying. Like, I know the art is – the art is always in com – like – I get away from reading regular books to read comics, to enjoy the art and let the art help out with the imagination. Just tell the story. DC, in my opinion, has always had this problem, but especially recently. Nope. They've always had this problem. They have too many words in the book. And I know people are going to kill me for that, but like you should let the art do some of the work for you. And I think, yes. and, and DC has great art. The problem with it is, is they put 50,000, they put too many words. Like for, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? I don't. And that's one thing that I really liked about uh, Strange Academy. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. The art was well, really good and told some of the it story. It was good. And the, the and there was a, like, it, it wasn't super, super wordy. It was, it was just, like I said, there was a lot of the art kept it going. So you, it didn't have to be super wordy. And I think you're right. This is exact as what's happening with DC is it's, remember Marvel was like that a while ago. A well, I was back. Yeah. They were, everything was super wordy and the art wasn't that good. And <clears throat> it was kind of a turnoff. And I think right. this kind of, I think this is like DC's catching up to it now. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always better. That's funny. Joe says that Legion of Superheroes <laughs> is always better at the end. I will agree with that. I mean, the X-Men book that came out, X-Men book was a little bit wordy, right? And, but then they shortened it halfway through to just start giving you the action and the art. And, I think you're right that there has been books, including the X-Men books, where they try to figure themselves out a whole. I also think Bettis has a lot to, lot to do with it. And thank God, because I heard he's not coming back to Marvel. That's, hey, make my Marvel, bro. Make my Marvel. He just needs to figure out how to get to his point. He just has to let the word. artists do their stuff, man. Yeah. I mean, Scotty Young's kill. Scotty Young, I draw big-headed kitty stuff, is killing Strange Academy. You want to know why? No, because that's Umberto, like, Umberto Ramos. Umberto Ramos. Yeah. yeah. But didn't Scotty Young... Oh, he's writing it. He's writing yeah. it. Yeah. Writing Scotty it. Young isn't isn't putting in like 50,000 words to convolute what's going on there. There was It was very touching. The first scene and the last mm -hmm. scene of that book, he used the words properly to touch... That's what I meant. I'm sorry I screwed that up. But Scotty Young used it properly to touch the art. To touch the art. God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Like He used it perfectly to illustrate the art so the art could teach us those two points and get us an emotional connection. I think everybody felt their first kiss at that point and at the end felt like that, like, oh man, that's so cool at the end. DC is like, just throw a, just throw words on the page. Don't care about the art. Just throw some junk on the page and hopefully people will get confused and then well, we can it, tell them that's above their head. You well, one, I mean? of, one, one of the books, head. one of the books that um, I know me and Kyle loved that, uh, Future State did put out other than Dark Detective that Future State put out this week was the um, Suicide Squad book. The Suicide Squad book wasn't bad. No, I, th I think it wasn't bad. It, it's I think it's because it was just so you actually didn't even see the Suicide Squad to the end of the book. So they have this like Task Force X or something at the beginning. Justice Squad, they're called. Justice and they, Squad. And, and what they basically are is the Suicide Squad under Amanda Waller and um, – it's just they're they're the new Justice League. So it's basically like when uh, Norman had the Dark Avengers. That's basically what it is. It's the mm -hmm. exact same thing. He's got these fake people being the Justice Justice League characters. He's got uh, the dude from Talon being Batman. Uh, he's got uh, this chick that has um, a hologram thing for as Wonder Woman. This 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 alien fish character has as uh, as. Uh, Arthur Curry, um, or as uh, Aquaman, and then as Flash, she's got this. Um, what's uh, what's her name? Uh, Speed Freak? No, wait, Bolt, Bolt. Mm -hmm. um, and then as this was the funny one to me, as Martian Manhunter, it's it says, and yes, you guessed it, that's not Martian Manhunter either. It's Clayface Eight or Clayface Twelve <laughs> or whatever the hell number this mm -hmm. one is. Nothing to fear but a ball of dirt and delusions of grandeur. And I love that because that's a funny – that's a funny because we always – I remember always looking for the first appearance of Clayface and it's like there's like 10 of them. Like which is the Clayface I want, you know? Yep. But the interesting thing was is that Superman is Connor Kent. Mm -hmm. That's weird, right? Yes. It just it, – uh, anyway, so Superman's Connor Kent and they go out and they're trying to fight – um some uh, guys who are going against the magistrate, which includes uh, Brainiac, Mongol, and uh, the chick Mongol, and uh, Sinestro. And they're trying to take them out, and they have this huge battle. And the interesting thing is the way that they take out Sinestro is they chop off his hand. That's so crazy. They chop off his hand. Up? Can you roll that and, back up? I'm sorry, Brian. Can you roll that back up? Is that Crane from TMNT there behind – no, that's clay face. That's clay face. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Up one more. Up one more. Yeah. Let first the first panel on the left side. This one right here. Nope. Up one more. Up one more. Uh, to the left. First yep. panel. No, right there. Yep. yep. Over. Yep. Yeah, right there. Yeah. There it is. It's the crazy. Back. No, that's Brainiac. <laughs> Brainiac. Right yeah. Yeah. Brainiac. <laughs> but I just thought that was cool that they chopped off his hand. Like, if you want to take out the most powerful person in the group, Sinestro, just chop off his hand. They do it. He falls. Yeah, 
uh, but the interesting thing is that Talon starts going rogue and he's like, I'm gonna just gonna kill all these people. And yeah. Amanda Waller is in the background. She's the one that's saying all these things about all these people, who they are. And Amanda Waller just blows his head off. Per- that was oh. awesome. Yeah. Which I would have loved to see in the real in the movie. You know, yeah. you know how awesome that. that would be if they did something like that? Oh, that'd really be great. Cool. Yeah. So Anyways, they get and they all freaked all out. Too hard. And, but yeah, and then when they really settled down, they none of them were actually very heartbroken about it. Yeah. They were and, like, eh, and, I kind of ran his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, the, the crazy thing is that the whole plan was to get Brainiac's uh, head because they needed it for some, you know, it's the last part they need for some base they're building or something. And the whole time there's this extra group watching them do their thing and they're mm-hmm. in the shadows and you don't know who they are. And that group goes back to talk to Amanda Waller and they start freaking out because they saw somebody lose their head and they start fighting. And Amanda's like telling Connor, you better settle them down or I'm going to settle them down. And Connor's like, please don't like give him a chance. And Amanda just basically shocks them all and puts them all out. And uh, she's like, I'm taking over now. But she, she shows that they're basically growing these people and that the Talon character can be brought back. And these are, um, I don't know what they would be called, but they had like, are they clones? There will always That's be a I task force D. So I don't know if they're clones or, but th- these are the crime syndicate people. You remember the crime syndicate, uh, you know, from um, the, the old school um, Ultraman and, uh uh owl man and uh all those characters yeah, 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 okay. great characters yeah. so she's got them on basically on ice and um they also yeah. have a black she lantern. Has to let them know that like i can replace any of you it doesn't yeah. matter like yep. none of you guys actually matter yep and so basically they've got to go do another mission and uh they you know you go find out that uh, that those other people are out looking for somebody and they're looking for man- Black Manta. And boom, who's the people? It's the Suicide Squad. And who? which Suicide Squad? The Suicide Squad that's coming out in the movie. There's Peace. There's uh, mm-hmm. what, Peacekeeper. What's this guy's name? Peacemaker. Uh, this is the – a lot of these characters are going to be in the new Suicide Squad movie. So you knew – I mean, it's not surprising, but that's the new Suicide Squad. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting. But this was cool. When they went into the future and uh, Watchtower Mogo, you got the you know the Green Lantern planet, and they got this really cool story, um, you know, in the future with the uh, if you remember these characters, uh, the Future Justice League, which is really cool. I like these guys, and uh, who, who else is going to be in here? Um, I won't give it all away, but uh, of course, you got another movie coming out soon, and you know the character that they're just banking on is black adam right Mm -hmm. and when you see black adam who does black adam look like the rock the rock Rock. (laughs) (laughs) but i don't know the rock doesn't he that's the rock yeah, maybe. Okay. Because Black Adam's oh, being yeah. played by The Rock. That you just gotta get the, the eyebrow rock. to go up. If the eyebrow went up, I'd. I'd That's hundred <laughs> percent like The Rock right there. Said jabroni every once in a while. Black Adam comes out as jabronis. <laughs> like, look at that. That's The Rock right there. Right. No that doubt. is The Rock. Yeah, yeah. That's The Rock. That's The Rock. But it's kind of cool. This is interesting. Blue Beetle and and uh, and uh, Gold uh, Booster Gold mix gold beetle is this her first appearance this could be a first appearance right gold beetle so there you go but we'll see suicide squad wasn't bad i didn't think it was terrible and uh the oh, second part was pretty good yes anything the rocks in is gonna be a win dude i mean it just is <laughs> just real quickly i want to say it. shout out some people in the chat everybody glad you're taking care of people in chat lord tap man glad to, glad that you're here glad to have you around Really cool to see you. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, yeah, The Rock is good. I'm glad to see it. Looks like Marco. <laughs> now I'm going to get another comment in the comment section. Hey, make sure you guys are liking it. I know Matt's, Matt's still with us. He's in there uh, wheeling and dealing in the in the chat, telling everybody to like and subscribe and write a comment down below. We really do appreciate it if you guys do that. I think we still got a little bit more. This is supposed to be a 30-minute segment, but you know when you get No, that's it. I, I think that's it. We're ready to go on to our next segment. Yes. We're not doing, we're not doing Star Wars. Oh, Wars. Yes. oh no. Hey, hey, we we always, won't do Star Wars. Jesus. No, no. I we're always forget about Star Wars. Goddamn Star Wars. 
Al, <laughs> Al needs a nap, bro. Like I am. I'm actually, I'm gonna go make a drink. Well, we all right. We'll let's, do it afterwards. We can do it after. Let's do it. The no, five. I do want to get. I, no, I do want to get into uh, the High Republic. And I'll run through um, it real quick. I'll run through it real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. So uh, here we go. Let's let's get let's get into this High Republic stuff, and um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Thank these you, are the. Thank you very much, Patrick. He said that at least uh, Dwayne Johnson is a better looking dude than what they used to call me, which was Ben Roethlisberger. So I appreciate yeah. it. My wife so, too. So this right here is the. Is this the A cover? What is what? What's up with this? Go ahead. I can't see. You you can't see this. Oh, sorry. My bad. No. I'm I'm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a cover. So this is coming yeah. out. Coming I'm up professional this week. podcaster here. Yeah. So this is the A cover for uh, High Republic that's coming out this week, and um, it's kind of interesting. Here's your armless character that uh, we all knew he was going to lose an arm, but if, um, if you snuck up on somebody, I we can't help you anymore. The stuff sneaking up on you guys. All right, yeah. go to next cover. So that's yeah. number one. You got Skier on the front. We know he still doesn't have an arm. Looks like they're going to finally. Uh, Reveal the now that is the cover B, uh, or not the cover B, that's the variant. It's already doing pretty well. This, this one that's the one in comics. One, this is so cool. Um, this care, I don't know if you guys have been following one in comics. I'm older, so like the variant, I've said this a hundred times. The store variant game really is has a little bit different meaning, but one in comics has got me back to buying a store variant every once in a while. You know, they had that haha, they did that, they were the ones to first report that lore that is that that's laura d which is really cool i mean that's just cool um and you know their prices are pretty good too and who is laura d so she's one of the runners for the the nil like she's one of the last there used to be three there's two left she's one but she's also like this weird like she it seems like she's playing a game right now right you got roe who's the main leader at this point and then you've got two runners and she seems to be the one that's a little bit like trickier than the other two. Like she plays chess while everybody else is playing checkers. And if you looked at the one in 10, she was the character that was on the one in 10, um, which I think a lot of people slept on. Obviously not you guys in the chat. Cause you guys know better than that. Um, but I think this is where we're going to introduce them because I think, because wanted comics was allowed to push this out and identify her as this person. And at the same time, Calvin Scott has been promoting this a lot. Like, saying, hey, this is who this character is. Look at this cover and everything like that. And Kevin Scott, obviously, is the guy who is writing the books. So to know that, this is a pretty important book, I think, coming out this week. We do have some of the preview panels going through it. They've already released them. Uh, we get to see the twins, uh, the Zartan twins, uh, as Pete likes to call them. No, the talk, not Zartan twins. Come oh. on. G.I. Joe, brother. This ain't Star Wars. We can't get this <laughs> shit wrong when it comes to G.I. Joe. Tomax and Zaman. Oh, yeah, the ones that... Okay, with Zartan. Oh, either way. The Crimson twins. God. They share They share one mind. They do. They, don't, <laughs> they haven't actually finished off each other's sentences yet, so I don't know if they're quite going the whole Crimson Tide twins guys. By the way, those are I still have a couple of those. Big funny story about those later. Um, but yeah, you get to see the gas. They say that was the gas. This was something we were expecting that they're gonna invade a ship right now. You see everybody in there, you get the twins attacking, and then go ahead. So this is the top panel. This is pretty cool because that's actually out of the novel. And this is what Brian brought up. We all knew that he was missing an arm. That's them actually showing him lose his arm, which is cool. I look. They're not playing around with this one. They're going to give you a little bit of gore as far as Star Wars will go, which is nice to see that they're not uh, shading away from the action. Do we have one more panel? I think we might. I think that's it. I think that's it. Is that it? So, we do have some covers of uh, the, the the High Republic. You got to remember that oh. we have the High Republic Adventures stuff. Adventures is coming out too. Now, this is a very interesting little tidbit. So this is cover A. Now, cover the, the RI cover was shown a lot. This was supposed to be the RI cover. I will tell you this. Uh, the solicitor has taken down this artwork. So I'm not, guys, be careful. I'm not guaranteeing this is going to be the artwork. That's all I'm going to tell you. I think it will be. I hope it is because it's a cool cover. I know people knew this was coming. There's some interesting points in that book too. And do not fall asleep on Star Wars. This Star Wars Adventures, it's coming out. I know a lot of people were looking forward to this. People had seen it earlier because when the preview book came out, people got confused because there's so many Star Wars adventures. If you're calling up your comic book store or whoever it is, look under tail, Star Wars Adventures, Tales of Villainy, not just Star Wars Adventures. There's four Star Wars Adventure titles. They'll get it wrong. You have to look under Tales of Villainy to get the right cover for this. Um, 
That's and it's it. kind of interesting because we're going to get in, uh, we, uh, depending how time is, we're going to get into uh, some of the uh, uh, action figure stuff that got announced. But this uh, exact basically character or this exact version of Darth Maul was announced in that PulseCon stuff, right? Oh, when we get to PulseCon mess. Yeah, yeah. that's a very interesting one. I'm not saying there's going to be a ton of huge stuff in these. These tales of heroes and tales of villainy haven't been there. There hasn't been anything that exciting in them. They've just been okay filler reads. I wish that. Well, look Wars- at that. It's the exact same outfit yeah, the- and everything. Sunday. Yeah. I mean, oh well, that's when he got his mechanical legs. Yeah, I get that, but the, that's the- so cool, though. It is cool. Yep. I mean, so it's the exact cool same, like and they were just announced today, so uh, it's very interesting. Yesterday, that was Fans Friday. That was uh, Pulse Con fan, or the Hasbro Pulse Fan Friday. Yeah, very cool stuff. So um, we'll get into that later. But uh, that's the that's a uh, uh, High Republic. But you know, one of the things about High Republic also is that second printing uh, uh, book that's going for uh, crazy amounts right now. Um, on eBay. Saying in the chat earlier, I can't believe that thing. Look, you know, we were here. We were doing it. We actually were going to post a picture of Brian looking at it and shaking his head because we had <laughs> said, we said, look, we think this book is under ordered, even though we think there's 500,000 copies of number one, number two got under ordered because everybody missed the FOC. And you just see Brian going like this in a video we did about a month ago here on MCM. And it turned out, <laughs> I, I mean, I looked at chat earlier. I saw what you guys are saying. And that's the word on the street. It, it did not hit. It didn't hit the shelves. People either, so good job for all you guys that pulled it earlier. Like I told everybody else that hit me in the DM that you missed one. I even got shorted on the 10 copies I was supposed to get. I gave away, you know, six of the extra that I was willing to do. What is the cover? What's the cover price on those? $3.99. So they're only going for about uh, four times cover. I mean, that's, that's nice, but, but, uh, but the first print, when the first print came out, that thing was like, uh, what, like six, seven times cover. I think it it was the Hans was the Hans was. Yeah. But, that, but I'm telling you, nobody got that book. Nobody's gotten the two. I mean, like they didn't hit shelves. And that's the one, you know, if you're playing the game of which is the, there you go, T-Bone. Good, for, mm. good job. But th- if you're playing the game, which is going to be the lower print run game, which I don't know. Sometimes that matters. Sometimes it doesn't. This is going to be it. Three is not going to be it. They haven't come out with a four yet. Three is going to be heavily ordered. Four isn't, you know, for this to steadily go and people not be able to, to find it on shelves. If you're in the chat and you found one on the shelves, let me know. But I I have a little feeling because I've heard a lot of people come back that they either went in or called up their store and there was none available. They were all in either polls or they just didn't order them. It was very short. It was before one came out. Like we said before, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it was. And people missed this one. So just like some other prints, if you're buying this for $3.99, this might be one you stole away and you wait till the second print and the third print collector's get out there and choose which book they want to see. You know what I mean? Also made the top 10. Thank you again. I like to see all my books on the top 10. Thank you for that, Brian. I know you guys didn't do it on purpose or Ben. Tell Ben. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, one of the things that uh, was interesting at the end of uh, all the, the um, future state stuff was them talking about infinite frontier. And, you know, the interesting thing is, this is where they're going after Future State. This is what Future State is setting up uh, as this Infinite Frontier stuff. And this Infinite Frontier stuff is extensive. Like, there is a lot of books that are coming out. There's a lot of creators that are going to be working on this stuff. Um, as Kyle talked about, Kyle's a big fan of Joshua Williamson. And Joshua Williamson is going to be doing uh, Justice League number one, um, which is which is cool. And Everybody's talking about this image right now because you've got uh, Damien down here and Red X up here. But the interesting thing is if you kind of look at all the characters, it looks like they're standing next to people that could be their counterparts in a different time. You got Batman here and a different Batman, Damien here, Red X here, Superman here, Superman. Like they could be Flash, Flash. So I think that we're what, what we could be seeing is Okay, yeah, this is Damien here that turns into Red X. This is Batman here that turns into this version of Batman. This is this Superman here that turns into this Superman here. So we don't know if it's not Red X, if it is, if Damien is Red X, but there's a lot that we could be said about this uh, this little image. But this is uh, for Infinite Frontier, and 
Um, we kind of did a little bit of a deep dive on it. One of the interesting things that uh, we saw was if you guys go, it already got it's already got a Wikipedia entry. And here's all the titles that are coming out for Infinite Frontier. Um, some of these uh, are going to start over at number ones. Some of them are going to keep their legacy. Um, uh, we've got, uh, starting off with action comics, action comics is going to keep its legacy numbering. Uh, it's going to, infinite frontier is going to start in March with issue 1029 and it's going to be, um, Becky Cloonan and Phil Hester and Michael Avon Oming, uh, on art. I'll just name some of the names that I recognize. Uh, Batman is going to, um, go to its legacy numbering. Uh, it's mm-hmm. going to be 106, so it's going to keep Volume Three's legacy numbering, and that'll be in March. And that's uh, James Tynan the Fourth and Joshua Williamson on Batman. That's pretty cool. He's going to be doing Batman too. But I think he was saying in his interviews that whatever James has in store, it's it's killer. So it's going to James be is killing it. Something oh. is killing children is amazing. He's been one. Of, he's he, I used to gloat about this guy forever. Yes, Flash. Well, Joshua Williamson is the guy that got me reading yeah. and loving Flash, but James, even with uh, Batman Eternal and Robin War and all that, like I was a huge fan of his. And you know, when I got to meet him and talk to him, and you know, like he's he's a very nice dude, he's a very cool dude. But you know, being Scott Snyder's protege, it's really showing. It's like his Batman knowledge and his what's coming out of what he's doing is killing it. Then, uh, Timo just said, spoiler alert, Red X is Nico. You're welcome. <laughs> well, we didn't want to give that away yet. <laughs> oh, anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, this is good. Actually, this is, I think, good news for DC. Because when you look about it, being a Marvel fan, I remember the legacy stuff. By the way, this is going to bomb. But I do remember this. <laughs> like, when the legacy stuff came out, the stuff before it now is starting to hit, right? The legacy stuff never is like, there's going to be certain things there, but it's like a straightening of the ship. It's like a redrafting of an NFL team. You finally admitted that your team blows and you just got to cut ties and fire the GM, fire the coach, come back and reboot. And you got to take it on the chin real quickly. And then after you do that and all your gimmicks are sold out, maybe you'll start getting some good writers and you'll start doing some good stuff on books. And this looks like this is what's going to happen. It looks like they're finally starting to try to just scratch it and turn over. So I hope that is the truth. You got like Joshua Williamson and James uh, Tiny, and they're, I, they're, it looks like DC's starting to put quite a few eggs in the basket for them. Well, yeah, let's go over some of these other ones. You got Batman Urban Legends, which is going to start fresh at number one with Chip Zdarsky, Rosenberg, um, and uh, a bunch of people I don't really know much about on art. Eddie Burrows, Marcus Toe, Ryan Benjamin, Loa Braga, and Max Dunbar. The Batman vs. Superman stuff is going to keep its numbering. Uh, it's going to start with 16, and uh, it's got Ivan Rice on it. And Danny Mickey, who's a great, great colorist. Uh, If you guys love uh, the Capullo Batman stuff, that was Danny Mickey. Um, Mm -hmm. Catwoman is going to keep its legacy numbering from 29 on. You got Detective uh, keeping its legacy numbering from 1034. And that's going to be Joshua Williamson uh, uh, again as part of that. And then The Flash uh, is going to be 768 on. Uh, Brandon Peterson on art, which is cool. Uh, old school uh, artist uh, from back in the day that is just awesome. Uh, Green Lantern's going to start fresh. Harley Quinn's going to start fresh. The Joker's going to start fresh. Look at that. James Tynan's going to be doing a Joker see, stuff. They're, 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 uh, it looks like you could see who's looks like who's going to be the face of DC now. Yeah. And, and so these are all the ongoing books right here. And so then the one I'm kind have- of excited about before you scroll, scroll up a little bit, Brian. It's, I'm really interested in this Robin. Yeah. Joshua Williamson. He's going to be writing a, a new Robin series and it's Damian Wayne. So I think yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, I think that's going to be a fun one. And it's really going to be fun to read. Yep. You're fucking better. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. I, I'm with you, man. Damian, they need to bring Damian back and have Damian be badass. Yeah. They um, have to make Damian badass. That will be one that I actually pick up and read if, if they, take off with it if they do a good job that's that's my I mean, joshua williamson's a killer writer and I, so i think i 
I but think, I think everybody's going to be pleasantly surprised. Jay talk- brought up Batman and the Dark Knight and yeah. Tom Taylor and Andy Kubert is that's, he's 100% right. That is that's what I think they need. I think we brought it up earlier too and you need the combo. You need to have the combo where they work well together. The art doesn't take away from the writing and the writing doesn't take away from the art and I think that might be a W. And these are, but these are only limited series. They're going to just going to be one, one to one through six, one through four, and one through ten. There is a Batman called the uh, the next Batman Second Son, uh, which I don't know what that's going to be about, but um, it'll be interesting. Swamp Thing is going to be in here though, one through ten. It's not an ongoing, but I think that's kind of cool. Everybody's talking about Swamp Thing from Future State being good, and then there's the the one shot that I mean, look at the the list of writers and artists on this one shot, uh, Infinite Frontier Zero, which comes out in March. So cool stuff. Yeah, um, like everybody's writing that one, that zero to get it launched. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, this uh, of course this image everybody's kind of geeking out over, but we'll we'll see what happens. Um, All it needs a couple more wins. They're getting a couple wins here out of this. If we love it or hate it, there is a couple wins that they're getting out of Future State right now. If you come back and do another minis and get a couple more wins, that's you're in the right direction. DC strongly needs Ws. They got to stop putting L's up on the board, dude. They really mm-hmm. have to stop putting L's up on the board. It's not good. It's not good for the comic book market, and it's not good for fans. It really isn't. And you could be a if you're a fan of Marvel, if you're the guy that says I don't read the big two, I only read Independence. If you're that guy, I don't care. You need these companies to be healthy. I read a lot of Independence too. You know what makes the Independence better? When the big two are better, they really do. They make it better. That's some of the best writing there. They have. We need some W's out of DC. I know I joke a lot about it, but. We got to get some W's. Bro. Well, one thing I do want to say is that there is uh, about 100 people watching live right now. Make sure you guys hit those thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And make sure you hit the bell with all notifications on so you know every show that drops from Tales from the Flipside YouTube channel. A lot of good shows on this network um, that you guys need to check out. All kinds of uh, comic and pop culture uh, content that is just really good. I'm and- really sucked into the Star Wars show that the... That's Patrick, Marco. Sorry, Patrick can have yeah. off right there. Sorry, go ahead. You're sucked into the Star Wars show on Sunday. I know. No, no, I'm not. I'm I'm not sucked into it anymore. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I, wa- I wasn't to you interrupt me. It's all right. I guess other stuff's more important. That is doing it, but that's it. That is sorry. Yeah. Um, no, there's some great stuff on here, and it it keeps. I know this channel keeps me busy with content. Yeah. A lot it, of lo- watch a lot of. A lot of great fans in in the live chat. Every show, every week. I swear to God, some of the best fans that you and listeners that you could ever ask for. Yeah, it's great. We appreciate you guys. Crazy. Also, make sure make sure you know one of the things that we do ask from you guys. If there's something that we could be doing better, something that you really like that we do, something that you don't like that we do, let us know, um, and we'll we'll try and change things up, make it better. Uh, we're trying to put out the best content available. So. Best right. now YouTube. Yeah. Best kept now, secret now. in comics. Yeah. Just remember to just remember to tune into Marco's Star Wars or whenever it happens to be. I'm on too much, yeah. <laughs> no, I do I, we got the Clone Wars. Hey, we do have the Clone Wars review tomorrow. You're on two nights in a, a during the week, right? Yeah, well, this I'm yes, I I'm on whenever I'm talking about can. Star Wars. I'm not talking about a great show like this one. I'm talking no, about so star wars show we have thursday night we do our regular like deep diving stuff on thursday night then we are putting now we're doing weekly reviews on comics that came out we're going to have a darth vader run right before the new darth vader drops out also do not forget this sunday tomorrow we are starting to review clone wars that's not actually me that's the solo wookies of the world the gens of the world the pizza of the world they're like listen marco we got to review clone wars let's get it out there and do it we'll also have special guests always coming in I'm not going to say somebody, but their initials might be M and M and is part of the CVSI family might be coming out this week. We'll see. We're not guaranteeing anything, but he might be there too. I know we have a lot of people talking about it. Check out the Instagram. It's uh, tales from the dark side underscore PDSC. If you want, we'll have the list there. We'll also send the list. Brian McClay might be a friend of mine. You know, they call him the comic Jesus. So maybe he'll push out something <laughs> on the main channel for me too. Please, Jesus, do it for me and get you guys caught up. Two short ones right now. It's um, 
the first series, number 16, the second series, number 16 also. So series one and series two, number 16 are the episodes we're watching and reviewing. We are doing it in watch order. Uh, that was a lot. I cannot believe I just said all that. All right, <laughs> there we go. Enough promoing for Star Wars. Hey, so remember to find this this show on Instagram as well. Yeah, yeah, Modern yeah. Comic Mayhem. Modern find Comic Mayhem. Instagram's doing hot right now. Yeah, very, very good stuff. Uh, let's get on to the thing that everybody is here, here for to tonight. Yeah, everybody has come here tonight to see, and that is um, a really big, good topic that uh, I was super excited when uh, the guys came up with it, and that is the top five books that elude you. And um, these aren't necessarily like the books that you know, want to flip and make a ton of money. These are like the books that you you really want because you want them in your PC. They're, they're, they don't necessarily have to be the most expensive book. They just books that just you never seem to find in the wild or you yep. haven't found at a price point that is worth buying yet or something like that. So a lot of good stuff. Um, one of the things that I, I think is really cool that the guys do is they – ask their fans to join in. So if you guys um, ever want to be part of these lists or if you see a list that's coming up uh, that uh, you have some books you want to talk about, send it in. Let the guys know. Make a video you know, showing one or a couple of the books that they're talking about or that, that you think should be on your list. Um, that is a book that eluded you. And uh, you know the guys will throw it up. Uh, do you guys have any ideas about next week's list? No, I, I was just, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, there's oh, one, so. there's one that I think we might, at the end of this, we might <laughs> pop it out there and see if people actually like it and see what they yeah. yeah. So um, we'll, we'll come up with next week's list idea before the end of the show. And uh, it'll give only one of Kyle's picks. So we don't want to say it yet. Let's all, just, we'll, yes. We'll let all the fans know about next week's list. So if they have so uh, Monday, you got, if you guys check out the Instagram, you should see the, what the topic is. Definitely by Monday. We'll probably talk about it here, but definitely find us on Instagram on Monday and you should totally be able to, you'll know what it is. Super dope. All right. Super, super um, dope. I had a hard enough time coming up with this list, man. How do you just pick five? I could have picked like 40. I know, I know. It was, the, but what, the way I did it was these are the ones that for one reason or another, I would love to have them in my personal collection. And they just they just never fucking made it in here yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are the books that elude us. Uh, we're gonna get started off tonight. We did have uh, one of the fans sent in a list that uh, we'll get to uh, in the middle of our picks, but we're gonna start it off tonight with uh, Kyle Kyle's list, and uh, I'm gonna run through these and let Kyle talk about them. All right, here we go. Uh, I don't think these are in any really particular order. Uh, no, you know, no, I don't think yeah, so. Just, so. We'll just talk we'll just about them. Through them. Yeah, yeah. So here's Kyle's. I mean, they're first not pick. ranked. They all. I want them all the same. So this is the Walking Dead Lucille 100 retailer thank you copy. Nice book. So you remember this one got signed and one book got sent out to every comic book store. I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. I have all the ones but this one. No, I have a full run of Walking Dead. I've got them all. I've got so many variants that I could find. And I've this is like my this is my run of of runs. This is, you know, and this is just the book. One of the books I just it, it's just too expensive in there now that they're graded. Some of them somehow snuck in that yellow label, even though they were all pre-signed. I don't know how they did that. And there's a few that are floating out there that aren't even signed that are still not. And I don't know how those ones even got out there. But this one is just in the price point on this one. is just it's just too expensive. It's been too expensive since it came out. But I would it would be like the perfect like cherry on top of the of the Sunday to have this as part of my collection. So if anybody has this and they want to get rid of it for like 30 or 40 bucks, hit me up on the Instagram. I'd be more than happy to take it off your hands. If I find it, I will, I will just send it your way free of charge. <laughs> Hashtag kissable Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number two. Number two is the first appearance of Doc Ock. I have every mm. other appearance cover appearance that he has that except this one. And everybody knows why this one is just so expensive. It's just the one that I'll never be able to get because it, you know, the odds of finding it in the wild are going to be slim to none anyway. But I've, even I've seen ahead. this book quite a few times, but this is one of those 
and I don't want to speak for you, but this is one of those books that it, even in the lower grade, I'd maybe pick up just because I'd like to trade up later. But trying to find this in, in a decent, good grade is one, almost unaffordable. And two, it, it's a ghost. You just high grades of this just aren't out there. No, I mean, I think the highest grade I've ever seen for this is an eight. Yeah, I had I had a five five, a four, and a six in this, and I regret selling the six. I really regret selling the six. Oh, I might have to go the Rob route. That's a good uh that's a <laughs> yeah. yeah, get the four <laughs> I think that's might be where I'll have to go. That's actually an awesome idea. But that was yep, that's it, you know, and everybody knows this. This is a great iconic cover, it's fucking awesome. Any Doc Ock cover is awesome. He's just that character. I, yeah. I almost had this one on my list too. Almost. <laughs> Number three. The Walking Dead Michonne Ghost Variant. This is one of the ones where I was like, you could have got it when it came out for like 20 bucks. And I was like, you know what? Just going to hold out. I'm just going to wait. People aren't going to care about this book in two weeks. And that's when I'll pick it up. And it was it was one of the many times that I was wrong, because this book is still going for a few hundred bucks. And it's just too expensive to pick up right now. I mean, I guess I could really try to finagle, but it's an awesome cover. It's it's freaking cool, and it's just one of the ones that's it's just hard to get. Yeah, it is. Uh, JJ Maxwell says it's ironic that it's called a ghost variant. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. is. Yes. Yeah, that is. It's kind of smart. All right, number four. And this is just another one. It was the another retailer one that came out that where McFarland said thank you. And I think it, it came out, it started at a <clears throat> 150 bucks. Nine point nine. Thank you, Mary. And it was one of those books. I, and I, and this is, I said the same thing. You know what? It's Spawn. Everybody likes Spawn. But you know what's going to happen with this? The price is going to drop. I'll wait till it gets around like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, and then I'll go ahead and pick it up. Well, that day never came. Yeah. Yeah. It just I'm... didn't happen. And it's a cool cover because, you know, it's another, you know, it, you know, it was one that was on our, I think it was actually on my uh, Spawn 300 or my Th Amazing Spider Man 300 swipe uh, list. Yeah. And, so, and Todd will not sign this book. Uh, nope, you know, he refuses. It's this was the thank you variant. Yeah, mm -hmm. to the, to it, wasn't, the it wasn't meant. To, it wasn't really meant to get out into the wild. Yeah, so I'll think for it. Yeah, dope book. I think I think I have a nine eight of this uh, uh, somewhere around here. I know Brian has guaranteed three of the books that are that are on my <laughs> list, <laughs> and I know it for a fact because I've seen them. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> If a masked bandit shows up at your house, Brian, with a big gray beard, I swear it's not me. I swear. So the number one is Raphael Albuquerque. Now, this is I'm probably one of the few people on the planet to say this. I mean, he's a great artist, don't get me wrong, but he is one of my favorite artists. I mean, anything from American Vampire to this to when he did Huck to the detective, the, the detective covers when he was doing the early uh, Batman New 52 it's he, he's a great artist i like when he does everything it's real raw and it's real like dark looking so for years even before this book came out every comic book store that i buy books from here i always said hey i don't care about the price whatever you get an albuquerque cover drop it in my box so i was like with that request i was like you know what it's gonna be in my box i'm not worried about it comic book day comes i stroll on in going through <laughs> hey where's the uh albuquerque cover oh we sold that to somebody Thanos 13 yeah i wonder I was, why i was like ah oh, you probably sold it to fucking brian <laughs> <laughs> but i was like and it's <laughs> this was another one of those books where like when it came out it was automatically going for like 40 bucks it was good colors, but on the back side, there was so much Marvel rub. This was one where we talked about this earlier. I sent this in early. The Marvel rub 
came back and they gave me a nine four on it because of the Marvel rub. And then in the meantime, there's another one for ten dollars. I didn't buy it because of that. And then CGC excused the Marvel rub after that, and I kicked myself <laughs> for not buying that second cover and selling the nine four too. As a matter of fact. But I remember, cool. yeah, I remember saying, you know, uh, it came out at like 40 bucks and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to pick it up. And then I finally went to go pick it up. I was like, it's 80. And I was like, crap. And Brian's like, I'm just fucking buying these up like nothing. I'm just going to keep buying them. And I was like, all right, all right. I'm just going to wait for them to drop. And then I'm going to buy one from Brian or I'm going to buy one somewhere. And I was like, all right, all right. It's going to drop. It's going to drop. You know what? It's Albuquerque. It's that. It's 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 going to Man, I this is what I'm gonna do from now on. Anytime I say, "Hey, it's gonna drop," I'm gonna make sure just to automatically buy two, <laughs> because every time I say, "Hey, this book is gonna drop," it doesn't. So you heard well, it here. I'm it's funny. Two. It's funny because I, I got to give a big shout out to the to uh, some old the old school crew, uh, Unpressable Defects, Trey Kenyon. When this book came out, I, I remember specifically he said on the on the show buy this book go buy this book if it's 60 dollars raw right now go buy it buy a couple this book will be hot and i took his advice and i went and bought two <laughs> copies off three copies off ebay for 30 a piece i sold two of them instantly for uh, after i got them graded they came back in nine eight and i sold them for thirteen hundred dollars a piece like that uh, right right uh, a couple you know two three weeks after it came out i kept one of them uh, that I still haven't graded because it did have a little bit of the color rub on it, like Marco was talking about. But now that they've excused color rub stuff, I mean, this was like the first book where the color rub really came into a play was this book. Um, it, you know, everybody knew about color rub and stuff like that. So, yeah, the but, second one I looked at, and that was it too. Like when Trey was mentioning it, that was the deciding factor. You know, I had talked to somebody on the phone. I was like, I know Trey and the guys were mentioning this book. But like we already have one in, we already had gotten the grade back on it. They're marking this rub down. What are they talking about? Should I buy it? It was still pretty cheap at the time. It, like I said, it was ten or fifteen because the comic book store knew it had rub on the back of it. And I wish I would have. The guy who did bought buy it sent it in, and it was way worse than the one I had. Sent it in, got a nine eight on it, and I had already by the time he got it back had already sold the nine nine four six. I can't remember the exact grade on it. Whatever it was, they didn't give me a nine eight on it because they weren't. You're you're. This story is 100% true with what Brian's saying. They weren't grading them at the time like that. And all of you that listened to this channel and got that through Trey and the rest of them at that time, you did pretty good. $1,300. Man, I think I sold it. I, you know what? I was just about to say this. Yes, because I have an alert on eBay. Oh, still get still out of here. I still have, uh, I have an elite, a, a this alert is why I on eBay back. to this day. No. It still no. tells me every time a Thanos 13 variant comes on. Oh. I saw that. Yesterday, I was like, 400 bucks. I'm never ever gonna get this book. Did you just ever. hear what I mumbled out? Did you? I think that 9 6 sold for like $130 slap. It's 400 for some shit. Dude. And I even remember because I remember this because this was around Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. It I came out. Yeah. It, and uh, I remember my wife going, 80 bucks. You're just gonna have to wait. And I'm like, I don't think I should. And she's like, just you're gonna wait and it'll go down. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. You know, try to talk myself out of it anyway you know because i'd already gone sorry i'll never have you and Rafi albuquerque he's a pretty nice guy i remember i got my uh i think batman new 52 number eight signed by him it says his name on the cover it says albuquerque and it's a black cover and, and he had he signed it in red and it looked fucking awesome and i remember he went he told he talked to his handler his handler talked back and he says he doesn't know why he's signing this book. He didn't do this book. I said, his name's on the cover. And they talked back and forth. He said, he didn't do this book. And I said, then why they put his name on the cover? And he, and he, <laughs> and he picks the book up and he like flips through it. And he's looking and they talk again. And then he goes, okay, okay, he'll sign it. And he ends up signing it. But I'm like. Because he did the penciling in the book. Well, if you remember at that time, he was like the Peach Momoko now where he was doing covers every week. There was at least one or two Albuquerque covers. Mm -hmm. it, like he was just – and I could understand that. He's probably just pu pushing stuff stuff out at that point. You know, he's a cover artist at that point. He's just doing as many covers as he can. But, yeah, that's kind of crazy. And Kyle is right. He doesn't speak a lick of English. So, mm -mm. But, yeah, his uh, 
He didn't remember doing that. I don't know. He didn't know why his name was on the freaking book either. Uh, real quick before we go on to the next, uh, the next uh, group, um, I want to remind everybody to uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up. We got 104 people watching our live right now, and I only see 48 thumbs up on the YouTube video. Do us a favor, guys. Let us know what you think of the show. Hit that thumbs up. It does a lot for us in the analytics. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we appreciate you for doing so. All right, let's get into next. We've got uh, Marco on the list. And um, th his first one is a book that I absolutely love that uh, is one of the books that would probably have made my list, um, you know, if a couple others didn't. But this is a really cool one. And that so is I, Deadpool number 45, the uh, Run the Jewels variant. The Jewels. Yeah. yeah. So I don't get a lot of FOMO and sometimes I miss out on books. So I don't get disappointed because I always accept the fact that I'm going to miss out of it. This is one where they were like, I had one book on my list and we'll get to it later that I really am disappointed with. But they're like, well, isn't there any other book that you're like, eh? And I was like, well, books that I don't want to sell or anything. The Run the Jewels one, because I like Killer Mike. I really did like this. I saw it and for cover, because at the time it was, uh, I think it was only $10. And I was like, oh, man, I'll debate buying this. I don't think anybody's going to buy this. I'm going to wait for the sale because uh, they have an annual sale that was coming up in a little bit. And I knew it would just work in there. So I think I could buy it for like, 75% off. So I was waiting for that. And instead the book blew up and I was like, Oh, just a dumb move. That was just, it was just a dumb move. I wish I would have had it. And I really will not. Um, I won't pay anywhere close. I looked it up when I was looking this up and I said, Oh, it hasn't come back down yet. No, I won't pay that price, sir. I will not pay that price. Absolutely <laughs> no, not. sir. Well, no, you sir. know, that that is an interesting thing. We talked about the Albuquerque, uh, what the Albuquerque was going for, um, and um, you know, me being the professional podcaster I am, I forgot to bring up what some of these were going for. And let's uh, let's see what this Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. Yeah. It was Deadpool a Scotty Young book. Oh, I was like, yeah. nobody's buying a Scotty Young book for ten. They'll pay five dollars for a Scotty Young book. That has not also paying. become an incorrect statement. What's that? Yes, yes. <laughs> that is Deadpool an incorrect statement. Everybody buys Scotty Young. Yeah, it but not like for that price. They'll buy it for five dollars. They yeah. won't unless he's at a show. They won't buy it for more than five. Yes, I agree. When the book came out, though, you have to remember it's a rapper book at the time that one seventy five for an eight five is not bad. Yeah, I know, but I could have bought at it for twenty dollars for. Oh, this is Mexican variant. Okay, yeah, no, no, variant. that's not the real one. Yeah, well, that's yeah. still pretty good. Three twenty five best offer accepted. No, ten bucks. Three eighty one for a nine. You buy it for ten dollars is sold. I don't I mean, care what this is, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm a huge fan of Run the Jewels. I'm a huge fan of Killer Mike. Um, and I, they haven't put out a bad uh, uh, song yet, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I love how they did these, like, they were almost like a viral marketing type thing where they put these, um, the books out. I blame Rolling out. Stone. I, if they wouldn't have put the book in Rolling Stone, I don't think it would have done what it did. It was Scotty Young. You got to think in the mindset at the time, you're thinking, look, the hip hop covers weren't doing good. The Scotty Young stuff was doing okay, but it either had to be at a show or it had to be, you know, it's just the weird stuff that goes through my head. And then I set a price that I was willing to pay for it. And when the, and also too, like, you know, when you get that point where somebody's like, yeah, I'll buy that on discount then because you overpriced it and then it doesn't <laughs> go on discount. You can't really be like, well, I'm going to overpay for it now. Now you just have to play the wait out game. So I'll probably get it in a collection one time, hopefully. And that's how I'll be able to, um, in my own head, accept the fact that I probably am going to overpay for this book. But till that day comes, nah, I'm not paying, I'm not paying $30 for the Mexican variant. I'm not paying $200 for the US variant and the 6.0. No, not, not doing it. Um, <clears throat> the next book I have on the list. So this one's an interesting story. So I started telling stories on books. So I missed out on this book, but this is how I missed out on this book. And I know the chat is going to blow up. I still go to this LCS or the back of a truck. Yes, it's JJ. <laughs> uh, so I had actually pre-ordered this book from my LCS, who's been very good to me. Oh, there you show it. And the regular manager who takes care of me very well was not working that day. He had gotten sick on Tuesday. Wednesday hits. I call in just to make sure because this book was getting very hot. Said, hey, listen, uh, just want to double check. You have this in my file. I have the bat phone number to the LCS. 
I can call anybody I want there before the store opens. I do. The guy gets on. I was like, where's, I'm not going to say the guy's name. Where's the manager? And said, oh, he's been sick for the last two days. I say, that's unfortunate. I said, I just want to double check. You do have the one in 100 variant or for me for Ghost Spider. Yep, we got you the variant. I walk in the door at 10.01. He opened the door early. A customer was in front, a regular, a guy I like, very nice guy. Uh, bought him some Power Ranger books, gave him some stuff for free, stuff like that. I said, hey, can I grab my poll real quickly? He says, yeah, give me one sec. The guy turns around and he goes, hey, Marco, look at this book I got. I go, huh, you got one of those. He goes, yeah, got it for $100. I said, oh, that's nice. I said, can I see my poll? And uh, yeah, that, I didn't get the one. I got the B cover, got the B cover. And I was like, what the? Hey, dude, I, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, you have another one of those, correct? He's like, no, why? I said, I just talked to you on the phone an hour and a half ago. You said you had that variant in my poll. I've asked for that variant a month in advance. Like I did it off the FOC. What can I do? And you just see the guy in front of me's face turn red. And he's like, Marco, I'm so sorry here. I go, no, 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 no. It's your book, bro. But let me just tell you this. You just spent a hundred dollars on an $800 book. Cause at the time it was $800. And I said, you spent a hundred dollars on an 800 book. Congratulations. We're good. And he walked out and he tried to apologize. Tried to, he, it wasn't his fault that he bought it. Yeah. So that's what it was. So I, uh, that one, um, you know, I didn't get mad, but it actually actually kind of hurt the situation at the LCS because they had three. And in the, the very next week, some guy started screaming at a LCS worker because he had done something wrong. He had tried to pull a variant and pull the sticker off of it and yell at the worker. So then after that, somebody had said, well, the only reason he's doing it is because it sells for such more. So those two interacted and now the LCS does increase the price of the books. I am not mad at the guy who bought the book. I am not mad at the seller, uh, uh, the the worker, I'm disappointed in him, obviously. Um, yeah, it did. Yeah, that's it. So when that book was there, it was 800. Yeah, that's why I double checked it. I don't usually double check. But when I'm like, oh, yeah, $100 book and you give me a $499, $399 book for a $100 book, I was not exactly excited. But then again, I don't lose my cool over that stuff. So, I mean, I know people will keep to this day, people will bring this. That's why I went in there and I said, oh, we're doing this for a show. And they're like, oh, you're going to bring up Ghost Spider, aren't you? And I was like, oh, I forgot about that. But yeah, yeah, I might as well bring up Ghost Spider. So um, yeah, it is what it is. You, you know, you take it out. This is a book that's 100% my fault. We're doing the 8-0. We're not showing the 9-0. <clears throat> Me and one of my friends. This is where friends, you just sometimes just want to give them one of those right in the nizzos. <laughs> and that's because this book a couple of years ago, <laughs> yeah dad's everywhere agree i'm not mad i'm just disappointed is what's stick well yeah okay somebody read it off next time so i don't have to do a terrible job of it so strange adventures we look at strange adventures 205 it's the first dead man i like these weird characters obviously you've heard me talk about when i talk about dc i do enjoy dark justice league this book was 120 dollars on the wall on the wall and was all of a 90 it at worst was an 8.0 and i know it's 90 because I know who bought it and graded and it wasn't me. And I turned to my friend and said, Hey bro, I know he wants a hundred dollars for that. I know it's a little bit over right now, but that's a nine. Oh, right. Like looked at it, took it off, opened it all up, took it off the my light, did the whole thing. He's like, eh, it, at worst it's an 8.0. I don't know. I think we can do something better. Walked away, walked three boosts down, turned around, walked back. Book's gone. Book is gone. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. That's, that's one of those ones. This, this huh? is one that almost made my list too. This is another. That's a killer, man. Turn around and it's gone. That yeah, oh. I mean, it just was such high grade. That's the only reason it's there because it was one of those ones that was just such high grade. And it wasn't like I didn't have the money, and it wasn't like it wasn't bad. The guy said eight point oh, and I wanted a little bit higher than that. I knew it was nine. <laughs> Come to find out, six months later, I know who bought the book. Yeah. It was a 9.0, dude. And he didn't, he doesn't even have good pressers I do. So I ugh. anyways, so I put that book on there because I'm kind of doing the whole spectrum of ways to lose books that you kind of had. Now I won't chase this book regularly or anything like that, but that high of a grade, I'll always be disappointed. That's like that one chick you you kind of have her at the bar and you're just like, eh, but you don't you don't just keep going back to the same bar hoping she's there, right? Nico got the 9.0, Nico did not get that 9.0. <laughs> <laughs> please all right next book mm. so 
there is also a policy at my LCS that if you are a long run person who orders books for variants, you get first dibs on the rare variants, the one in one hundreds. There is a lady. Uh, I really like her. She gets all the ponies books. There's a guy who gets transformer books. But this is Transformers and Ponies. And this book I was trying to get for my kids because my kids, I have two of my 20 kids that are trying to read at the time. And they and one of them likes Transformers and the other one likes Ponies. It's the perfect combination. I wanted to get this to hold on to I them. I had that one in 100. I had requested. Well, no, because when they grow <laughs> up or something, it was really cool. Plus, I see them on Facebook groups all the time. What I do to, for them a lot of times was early on, I'd give them previews so they would be into comics. So I don't want them tearing up the regular books. I'd let them tear up the previews and go through it. They were very young at the time. The Transformers point series came out. It was something cool because both of them watched that. So I was like, we could get them involved with that. I had put in for it and they pretty much go, we love you. We like everything that you do, but like you ain't getting this book. You're, you're, you're third on the list. I said, third on the list. They're like, yeah, well, we have to give it. I'm almost said her name three times, so I'm not going to say her name. They're like, we have to give it to her because it's a pony book. And I, the only time I almost started arguing with them was like, you mother bleepers. Like, I spend a bleep ton with you guys, and I order FOC. I don't have to support my local LCS. And you're good. But then I showed up, and I saw her get this book, and I, it was worth it. Like, my kids don't need this. My kids are spoiled already, man. You know what I mean? They don't need this shit. So it was kind of really cool. That one in 100. Don't you understand? <laughs> I don't love my little ponies, Jedi Johnson. I love my kids. There's a difference. There is a difference. I don't hate Luke either. You know, I just hate dudes Luke that go doesn't out make me cry, but them. my little pony does. <laughs> it doesn't make me cry either. No. I mean, none of these things make me cry. What are you talking about? No, absolutely not. The only my reason I want to is. I'm not disappointed because the person who got it, like she is extremely happy. I actually got all the other high ratio covers for these books. My kids will be, look, they're spoiled little craps, man. I got money now. So like they are, they're going to be spoiled. I don't care. I just, this was one where I was like, man, now I see how it is. I'm first on the list all the time, except for when my little point comes up. Now all of a sudden I'm number third on the list. Huh, bro? Okay. Okay. I'll remember that. And do I have, oh, the last one is really, this was the number one book. This is the book I messed up. I screwed myself on this. I'll take this one on the chin all the time. This is Yellow Claw number two. Why I'm bringing this book up is I have Yellow Claw number one. I bought Yellow Claw number one and number four in a huge Silver Age run a long time ago. I was like, it's a four run series. Number two is the first Kirby. Kirby just came back to start doing stuff at Atlas at this point, right? Like, so he had left for a little bit, he had come back. This is his first Kirby. I'd gotten three, which was second. I was like, okay, cool. I'd gone out to Baltimore. This was like five years ago. And a dealer who I was kind of familiar with, but wasn't that, wasn't as close as I am now with, had this on the wall. Now, back then, we have to remember the time period we're talking about. A lot of people were Wednesday warring it and turning it into Silver Age. And they were really going after artists like Kirby and stuff like, like key books, but not just for characters, but key books that made a difference. And, and fortunately or unfortunately for me, Yellow Claw was what people were gambling on this book because it was Kirby coming back to Atlas, which is a huge deal because as you know, Atlas turns into Marvel, like huge, huge deal. That is not why I wanted this book. I wanted this book to complete the run. This dude had this book on there. Think about this. I'm missing a year because we all washed last year away. So it's six years ago. He had it on the wall, mid grade. Perfect. That's why I want mid grade. He had it on the wall for $300 and said, Kirby's return to Marvel. And I'm like, bro, that's more expensive than number one. Nobody cares about that. And he's like, I'm sorry, man. Like, this is what it is. It what is what it is. I go, yeah, I won't. No, I, I'd be willing to pay 150 for it. And he go, and he's like, very nicely said, well, I won't take 150 for it. And at that time in comics, I was surprised because everybody would take they didn't care. I'd start off at 50% and then we can negotiate. He didn't even negotiate. He's like, no. Um, we have become friends because he's actually semi-local, runs a show close to us now. I've bought some great books off of him before. He still does the same thing. If he thinks the book is priced the way he is, he'll leave it at that. If he doesn't care, he'll underprice it. I've gotten great books off of this. This book, I never got it and I've never gotten it for the price. And now that I offered 150 on it, I refuse to pay market rate, which I think his market rate is for what he's asked, what he was asking for it now. Like I don't, it's There's only one on eBay. It looks like, and it's a four or five for about 400 oh, bucks. I, yeah. I mean, this thing had to be close to a five dude too. So it was actually a good price for it. I, I just one. can't like, I want it. 
I want it raw because I have I don't have any of them graded. I want it a certain way. And it's one of those things that chap you. You know, when you say in your head, I don't know what everybody else does, but when you say in your head, like, I'll find that book for this price, that's why I never get FOMO. Like, I know I'm probably I'm never gonna find this book for that price. But what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, yeah, you know, it's um it is what it is. I'll always keep hunting and I hope I get lucky one day because it's easy to buy books, right? Like it's easy to like, oh, I like this book. It's expensive or whatever. I'll put it down on that. I'll sell these three books. It's not easy. Don't get me wrong. A lot of people are doing it and, and it's tough. Like if you want a 181, you got to sell a bunch of books to get there. I understand that. The longer you stay in this, the more you'll see these books more often. And there are certain ones that you just won't see in person anymore. And I am... And that's kind of what my hunt has been over the last like six or seven years is to actually see and buy it in person. And when you lose out on those, and this is the only one I've lost out on in person, really, I mean, the LCS stuff is what it is or the, you know, the dead man one fine, but that's the one I really, that's the one at, at nighttime. I'm like, damn, man, I missed that one. That was, that was before, before we move on to, to uh, solo and myself, we did have, uh, one of our fans sent in, uh, not just a fan, a friend of the show, a friend of the Flipside channel, friend of the family, uh, JJ. Patrick, yeah, sorry, Jatch, sorry, Jesus, JJ Maxwell sent in a, uh, a list of his own and uh, we appreciate him for doing so. Uh, we made uh, Patrick a, uh, a um, uh, Patrick, uh, m m I'm going to mess up his name, Melaragno. I'm probably saying it wrong. Patrick M. We made him a moderator in the chat. And I think JJ Maxwell, if he wants to become a moderator, just let us know, brother. You you two are two of the people that uh, we really appreciate this channel. So we're going to have to uh, show our appreciation by giving you guys moderator chat. So you you, you let it, let us know, JJ, if uh, that's something you want to do. But JJ did send in his list. And uh, I'm going to go through it really quick. One of his – here's his first book uh, on the list, Dr. Afra. Number one, the Neff Box exclusive. I'm guessing that's what this is. Do you know much about this uh, book, Marco? I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was, oh, yeah, but I was reading the comments. I appreciate all the comments that are going on here. What are we doing? So we're doing the, whose book is this? This JJ? is JJ Maxwell's. See, JJ Maxwell's got an interesting, interesting ghost book that he's putting up here. Anything that you can get with Afra putting in the back too. I know a lot of the people are going after the other one where you see the droids with the red eyes on the front and the black cover on the tree. But this is really a book that's going to be hard to find. Um, does, didn't this come out of a special tea box when they were sending it? It was like um, a combo, yeah, the, right? The, the Neff box is yeah, what, yeah, uh, yeah, what yeah, that's called. exactly where that came out of. I, uh, David Nakayama cover, and you guys all seen what David Nakayama has done in the past couple of months. He's been killing it over at Marvel. He did some really gorgeous Scarlet Witch stuff and just good stuff, man. And I like seeing uh, the, the evil droids in the back, too. So It is. And so this is, you know, when we get back to, like, when we were talking about wanted comics and me not a huge pe person to store variants or that type of stuff, like the off the box variants and stuff like this. This wasn't one that I typically go off. I know it's hard, and I know getting anything out of there is good especially if you can get in high grade and JJ does not disappoint with this book. I mean, that's a, that's a solid book, dude. That's cool. You don't see it a lot and you don't see a lot of people out there hunting from it. Might be one of those ones that's harder for everybody to guess. I guess you probably shouldn't have put that out there now because it's going to be on people's list. I, I mean, I believe it will. 100%. And we even got another one in there. John's box of comics. Thank you, John. We'll check it out too, before we end this, uh, the, we'll do it uh, here at the end here. We'll go find it. So very cool. All right. On to the next one. It is, this is an interesting one. And this is one that uh, I probably would have thought about putting on my list also. Um, I, I don't, this is a book that I can never find. And it's not yep. Sandman uh, number eight, the regular version. It's the Karen Berger version, uh, which if you look on the inside of Sandman number eight, there's either the Karen Berger uh, um, little thing that she writes up or the who's the other one? The other one is uh, what's her name? Not Karen Berger. Basically, the Karen Berger one was put out in the first couple of of print runs. I think I've I'd never seen one in person. Uh, the Karen Berger editorial on the front on the back uh, front cover, inside front cover. Um, really, really tough to find. 
there's a story behind it that I'm not really too sure about, but it's, it's a super hard book to find. And it's uh, up there with Sandman 75 second print as being one of the books that Sandman fans just just cannot find anywhere. Yeah, Brandon, you said it's Karen's letter to management. Yep. Um, so if you get a graded version, you have no idea what's inside that cover then. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that we talk about a lot with this book is if you guys ever see this book on a wall somewhere, ask to open it up and look inside. And if you see the Karen Berger uh, editorial letter in there, um, grab that book, uh, even if even if it's a little bit expensive, because it's so hard to find. I, like I said, I've you never seen it on, on the label. Uh, they, I don't know. I, they, I believe they, they, I know they, did, they didn't used to. I think it became an, it, it became a write on. You know how it used to be a write on stuff to. Um, CGC. I think it became a writer. Well, it, it, it's a crazy book. That's for sure. That's 100% for sure. It's really tough to find. So cool book, JJ, the Sandman number eight, Karen Berger. Berger He's doing good. Everybody. He's in home yeah. runs right now. Yeah. This one, uh, Kyle will like, and um, I'm not exactly sure which one, which issue this is, but I think this is the White Widow uh, book. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Uh, this is White Widow. Uh, let's see here. What is this book? White Widow number up. one, the San Diego Comic Con Boss Logic variant. So there was, uh, JJ says there was like 25 variants for the series, and this one is limited to 100. Um, he doesn't even like the series, but he's a huge Boss Logic fan and loves this cover. <laughs> but, uh, it's a book that he can never find. So super, super crazy. Um, yeah, really cool cover. And but who doesn't love Boss Logic? Two White Widow books today from Jesse. Yeah, a lot of people love uh, the White Widow series. Um, they love the homage covers too. But Boss Logic is, I love the Boss Logic stuff. I love how popular he's become. I love that he's doing covers. I love that he he kind of had his start by doing like just cool, like deviant art type stuff. Like this is what we would like to see if we could see it. And now a lot of those things are becoming reality. So very cool stuff. Very cool. Crying. Stuff. No, sorry. My context dried out. I can't. This see is it. another one that, uh, we know I, uh, John Z talks about this one a lot. A lot of the foreign guys talk about this one a lot. And this is a, always been a tough cover to find. This is the Michael Turner, Superman, Batman, number four, German variant, um, limited to begin with, and it's foreign, super hard to find, super even tougher to find in a, in a blue label. Um, I think most of them are green label because they were limited, and it says like what number it is on the back of the cover. But this is one of the early foreign variants that made everybody fall in love with foreign variants. You know what I mean? Like, this is one of those books that I remember people just talking about like crazy uh, the, the year after it came out. Uh, really, really tough book to find. And Michael Turner is one of the most underrated comic artists out there. He unfortunately passed away from the same type of cancer that my brother got, uh, osteosarcoma, I believe. And um, really sad story, but uh, he was a young stud and uh, art was second to none. If you guys love um which blade uh you're a michael turner fan bottom line so very cool stuff on that one and last but not least is this book uh this is robotech well let me say this right here we go robotech crystal dreams uh it was passed out at a con for for gamers for a game that was never made um they're incredibly rare and they sell in the four figure range and JJ says he's only seen it on eBay once. Jeez. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's a book I did not know about. Um, this is uh, this is something that – this is the type of books that I love. This is why I love these lists um, that uh, Modern Comic Mayhem are doing because it's, it's not necessarily spec lists. It's more along the lines of these are cool things that you might not know about and, yeah. and, and fun ideas to come up with these lists and to let – uh, people know who are maybe new in the hobby about some books that they've never seen. This is a book that I didn't know about. I've never heard mm -hmm. of this book. I've never seen this book. And now that I know about it, if I see it, I'll grab it because that definitely looks like a, a Sky Striker uh, Transformers type uh, jet right there, if I say so for myself. So very cool. All right. Let's get into Solo Wookie now. Solo, you Solo had a freaking a, a list, man. You had a killer list here, and you started off with a banger, man. 
Man, <laughs> <I collect laughs> list. Oh man, what a beautiful! I love this cover. This is Spawn two ninety nine. Uh, the is this the Emerald Comic Con? Is that what this is? No, what is this? this is uh, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, San okay. Diego. Yeah, and this book, uh, the first time I ever saw this book, it actually was signed by Todd McFarlane, and I'm I'm actually looking for the signed version of this book. I couldn't get a picture of it because there's none that exist on the internet. But I did see someone pull it out of a mystery box that they had bought, and it's signed by Todd McFarlane on the bottom in the same venom green that is across the top in the spawn lettering. And the way the two, I, I, it just pops. And this cover with that purple and the green on top and green on bottom signature, was it, it's just amazing. Mm. This book it is unsigned. They're they're like five hundred bucks. They're just nearly impossible. You, they're out there. You can get them, but at five hundred dollars, ouch! Like that's ouch. You know when you can find it, you, you got to be right place, right time, and right amount of money in your wallet to be able to pick this up. There, <laughs> it uh, this book eludes me, and I I love this cover. It this is a twenty nineteen. Top five greatest cover all time, 2019, in my opinion. It's totally just my opinion, but I, I love this cover. I live for this cover. All right. Number two, the original Hanna-Barbera Gold Key Scooby-Doo comic. Uh, first appearance of Scooby-Doo in comics, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. First appearance. I grew up with Scooby. I love Scooby-Doo. Um it just, I mean, how iconic is Scooby to so many of our lives? I've always wanted a first appearance, Hanna-Barbera, Golden Key, Scooby-Doo, number one. But I, and I've seen a couple and I almost bought one, but I want a high grade of this one. And again, high grades of this, not cheap, not cheap at all. The ones that I did see were were really beat up, and I almost bought one just to have one, just just to get one and get in that my foot in that door. But man, I think if it, I ever seen that book, no matter what the condition is, I think I just scoop it up. Yeah, it, I live a lot in regret, and that <laughs> I regret not not just buying it. I, well, I should have just dropped it. I mean, I. When I the one that I did see was in really bad condition, and I think it was around three fifty, and it was it was maybe a two five or a two, and it was it was like three three fifty. It, it just I really, a five zero for a thousand, yeah, a yeah. seven zero for six for eleven hundred. A what is this? A nine two for twenty grand. Yeah, yeah but who who graded that nine? Is that a CGC nine two? Yeah, CGC. Yeah. Yeah, Let's I, see what uh, sold price is for on this book and see if we got much. Uh, you got seven sixty five for a raw for copy. a raw copy for one and eight. You got three forty nine. It's, it's a rare. It's definitely a rare book. Here's a three twenty for a pretty beat up copy. So yeah, this is you know six old sold for uh, eleven hundred. It's just one of those books when you see it. I, I mean. Now, knowing what I know now versus what I knew then, <laughs> I should have picked it up. You know what I mean? It's one of those you look back in life and you go, ah, it was dumb. You should have should have got it when you could. Not um, wrong, Raggy. And if I am in that position again, then yeah, I'll 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 pick it up, you know, just to even get my foot in the door at a low grade at this point. Maybe because the odds of yeah, because you know the odds of stumbling across another one are going to be pretty slim to none. Yeah, and they're and they're out there, but they're they're hard. To, they're getting harder to find. You don't see them in the wild as much. You you definitely this is more one of those e eBay or third party kind of books, mm -hmm. and you gotta kind of know about it before you you don't just really stumble across this one. Here's another one you don't stumble across. Oh, oh God, Ever. my nemesis. This one. Killed. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. TMNT number one. So I've said it before. I'll recant my tale of terror again. When I was a child I or younger, I've never been a child. When I was younger, I actually 
held as close as I can get. Yeah, I held this book first printing not once but twice in my hand and did not <laughs> purchase it in a store called The Stand in University Mall in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I didn't buy it either time. I've held every printing of this and I still don't own the first three. And it just, ah, oh, this book kills me. I've actually held, I've held four of the first printings. Two were raw when I was young and two were actually at um, the old man con that we all went to, mm. what was that? a year and a half ago here in Phoenix. And there was a guy there that had two first prints and one of the second prints. And I looked at all of them and man, I'll, I imagine I'll never see this book. I'll probably never own this book is what I should say. This is say. fifth print, isn't it? Yep. I'll, I'll see them, but I won't. I, I it's, it's one of those books, man. You're going to drop 30 grand. You're going to drop 20, 30 grand. Mm. I mean, this is, this is my, my Hulk 181. I'll, I have no desire to, I mean, sure. If I ever get a Hulk 181, sure. I'm in, you know, 180, 181. I'm in that. I'll sure. I'd love to, but that's not something I look for. This is one that I look for. This is one that I, I hunt regularly to maybe, Cross my fingers, get lucky. <laughs> I don't know. Shit. Ah, brutal. Well, here, brutal. Here, I love this Super book. tough one to find, but I think this one's a little bit easier. Marvel Age number 12. This one I love, and it is because I'm, eh, I love the argument. First black suit. Guess what? Here it is, folks. This is the one. This <laughs> is the first black suit out of all of them. Everyone misquotes it. Everyone says different. This is it. CGC agrees. This is the first black suit. And I'm always trying. I've been, I started towards the middle of last year making a Marvel Age run. And this book is hard to find. Um, even in, in kind of a beat upgrade, this one's getting kind of tough. So I, I'm just, this one I think is obtainable. And... Man, I just, you know, hunt and search and dive and dig and, and keep your eye out and just keep looking. And and I don't want to spend a fortune on this book, but it's starting to look more like an obtainable book that I'll spend a little bit more on. What, um, I, you know, I'm going to be interested because we, we, we saw the, the Scooby-Doo was going for 20, 20 grand. Your, your uh, Turtles was going for 20 grand. Um, let's see what this one is going for. I know it's not, it couldn't be going for that much in high grade. It looks like you can get raws for about 15, 20 bucks. Uh, sure. um, but of course you do want to find it in, in, in your own. But the interesting yeah. thing is, you know, the I, fact I that I want this one in a pretty high grade. I want this cause just cause it is obtainable. Yeah. Here you go. Nine eights are about 500 bucks, which is very interesting. Very mm -hmm. interesting. So, um, you know, you can find it out there. It, it, uh, there's a lot of those every once in a while. I remember back in the day, you could go on. Here's another one, 500 bucks. So about nine eights for about 500 bucks. It's not. It's not too bad uh, when you uh, when you think about some of these other books that are super super crazy right now that you mentioned. Um, yeah. But yeah, they used to be able to go into comic shops and find you know long boxes of Marvel Age you know, unbagged because they were just everywhere at the time back in the day. And yeah. I am right there with you. I, there was a time period where I, me and Kyle would walk into Jesse James shop and Jesse would go Marvel age, new Marvel age stuff in the back. Go check it out. He knew I love these Marvel age. <laughs> books, man. So he yeah, would let I, me know uh, anytime I got, you know, new Marvel age stuff. So, all right. Yeah, now like the last, Marvel age and the who's who and the yeah. and those, history, know, of history of comics, history of comics. All right. Your well, last book is a big one too. And I want that one wrong. This one, I have a reprint. I do not have the original. I will probably never own the original. <laughs> and the original <laughs> is Star Wars number one, the 35 cent mm -hmm. variant. Yeah, and, and this one, as we all know, it's another big book, man. It's it's right place, right time, right amount of money in your, in your wallet to be able to pick this one up. Um, they're not real common. 
Star Wars collectors are freaks and fanatics, kind of like Spawn collectors and uh, TMNT collectors. Once they get them, they don't resell them. So being able to stumble upon your your Star Wars number one 35 cent variant, I mean, you're as the diamond in the rough. And I'm I'm happy with my terrible reprint, but you know, as as a big Star Wars fan, I always want to get that number one, and they're not cheap. Yeah, I mean, that thirty five cent variant. I mean, it was only in a small market as it was. Yeah, a couple states. Mm -hmm. So I mean, how many did they print? Two thousand, fifteen hundred. Oh. You know, I'm not even positive. It was not a, lo a lot. I'm just saying if it only went to a couple states, it couldn't have been a huge, huge print run. Well, and being, if I'm not mistaken, most all of them were newsstand prints, so they're not in high grade. All the well, no, So with the, yeah, with the 35s, they were testing the market and it, the, the print run was still decent. The problem with it is, is a lot of them got ruined either way, right? Yep. So you're not, like if the overall print run, let's say on this book, and it's not, but let's say like 30% of this came out at 35 uh, price variant. It's, it's tough, man, because you have to, it's regional for one. It was the most popular book at the time, not just for collectors, but for adults, which is just stupid crazy. You know what I mean? I think it's a little bit more than 15, by the way, Jedi. Um, <clears throat> and then it's also trying to track it down how they used to do all those regional distributions. So this book right here is tough to get it in even a decent grade because it was going to kids that were destroying it and in regional areas that weren't commonly, how should I say this, great to comic books. It wasn't a classic comic book area, if you know what I mean. So I like mean, they were like at the Ohio. grocery store, so kids were just... <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my mama was shopping and... So this is also around the time, though, where they are taking the dis the distribution was changing to a direct edition. And then some of the direct edition dealers were they upped it to 35 cents because the return policy at this. So they were selling these on a direct market, even though they were a newsstand version. So you got both of it. The problem with it was, was the areas that they were, there wasn't the the collectors that collected stuff like some of those dc collectors out of ohio they're keeping pristine things these were pretty much like it's the most popular thing out there go ahead and destroy it and sell it to kids that's what it was this was directed towards kids so you don't get to see a lot of good copies of this book that's well um before we get on to uh the final uh i think i'm last but i want to remind everybody what this is this is the top five books that elude us um and uh the way that modern comic mayhem guys do this they do a list every show uh last show was top five top 10 uh Just mcfarland no top 10 no it was 300 cover swipes yeah 300 cover swipes uh the show before that was j scott campbell the favorite j scott campbell covers and now uh this week it's the top five books that elude us and uh, one of the things that is really cool um is that they ask uh, all you viewers and listeners to join in and um you know they 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 announce the list the week of in their ig post or the show and you guys can uh, either send in your list a video of the list or you know send in an email of your books if you guys uh, make a video uh, we're able to play it on the show so even if it's just one book or a couple of books you know that's that's great we'd appreciate uh and we'll do our best to get your guys's list on the show um john's box o comics john gartner sent in his list on ig which is really cool and we're gonna get into that real fast here is john's list um he uh, he hit us up on IG. He uh, tagged at Tales from the Flipside. These are my five books. Never seen any of them in person, which I love. This is the type of stuff I love. All right, number one, Dirty Pair, the Adam Hughes, Dave Stevens homage cover. Uh, great cover, beautiful cover. One of the few Adam Hughes covers I still do not own either. Um, awesome book. I wish I had this book. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And and Dave Stevens' art is one of the most underappreciated artists in comics. And I love that Adam Hughes did an homage to uh, Space Vixens. This is, uh, I believe it was Space Vixens, the, um, the original homage. His uh, number two book is Wonder Woman 28, the steampunk variant. Another super tough book. 
super t- look how great that cover is who wouldn't want that like yeah I would buy that, you know, if I saw it and it wasn't a variant, but I think this is like a one in 25 or a one in 50, maybe something like that. Super, super tough to find. Number three, devil moon girl and devil dinosaur. Number one, the variant, uh, shout out to mighty Mel V and drunken chat crew. That's this the is a selfie book- variant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Super tough book to find. Um, great, great book. And I love number four, the IDW, uh, Baroness variant, Cobra Civil War issue 19 retailer incentive variant. Um, absolutely stunning, stunning GI Joe book. Uh, oh, one of the few GI Joe books I don't own. Yeah. yeah. I love that book. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And his final book is Squirrel Girl <laughs> number two, seven, 27. Sorry, my eyes are a little bit low. This is the Stan Lee uh, variant, I guess. And um, probably from the Stan Lee store, it looks like. And yeah, that's a great looking cover. And I've never seen that book ever. This is the first time mm-hmm. I've ever seen that book. Very I'm cool. Two of us. I didn't know that existed. That's that's a cool cover. And I'm not a big Squirrel Girl fan, but any, but that that's one. It's definitely I one to look out. out for. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool, man. That's very cool. That is very cool. So shout out to uh, John's Box Hill Comics. Give him a follow over on IG. Here's his IG Mm -hmm. page. It's uh, uh, at John's Box Hill Comics. He's a a big uh, friend of the family here. Doesn't even look like you're following him. Yeah, he's doing he's doing some good stuff. I mean, look at look at these covers that he's already posted, man. Gorgeous, gorgeous <sighs> stuff. So, big shout out to him. So, thank you everybody uh, that did send in stuff. And yeah, uh, I want to awesome. re- yeah, I want to remind everybody hit those thumbs up, hit those subscription buttons. Make sure you uh, hit the bell so you get all notifications whenever anything drops. Leave a comment, um, and uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for that. Yeah, great, great picks, John. Great picks. All right, now uh, I'll I'll end it out. Um, my number one, one of my books is Invincible Number One. <laughs> Kyle knows I've been looking for this book Forever. for Forever. yeah, ten years, ten years at least. Um, I've always been a huge Invincible fan. I'd never seen this book in the wild, not once, not once. Um, it's out there. I've just never seen it. Super hard to get in high grade. Uh, it was, uh, you know, kind of one of those walking dead type books. I don't know if they put out as many as walking dead or, or less, but, uh, you know, invincible back in the day, I'm you a big, they did person. less than 7,000. I, I don't know. So there's only 7,000 of those walking deads. I don't know how many of the invincible there are, but I wouldn't su- expect there was very many more than that. Um, I'm a big Kirkman fan because I'm a big, uh, battle pope fan and i was reading battle pope back when kirkman and tony moore were doing it out of their imprint funkatron comics and if you guys read the funkatron comics and battle pope i think it was wrath of god number three battle pope wrath of god number three they tease invincible on the back cover and uh I knew about Invincible back then, so I, you know, read the series when it came out. I read it in, in, uh, and this is gonna sound bad, but uh, uh, Torrance back in the day. So I didn't pick it up, uh, unfortunately. But uh, it sounds like Brandon says there's about seven thousand ish, maybe. I think 600. I think he's a little high on that. I think it's under sixty five. So I think it's around six, six two if we're if we're lucky. Mm. I think it's around six thousand mark with this with this oh, book. So yeah, it's gonna be tough to find. Very cool book, and it's going to be even harder to, to find in the future because not only are they doing the the cartoon, they're doing a live action, and uh, you got to love um, Kirkman properties, especially with I believe uh, Seth Rogen going to be doing mm-hmm. Invincible. I can't remember, but and, and uh, again, that's another one where you got to hit that. You got to have the money in your pocket. This book is not. This book is climbing. This book is not settled down for how many years? I mean, it just keeps going up and up. This isn't. Like, even if you're lucky enough to find it, do you have the money to buy it? <laughs> well, usually, uh, shout out to Larry's Comics. Usually the book that um, that people do, you know, see when uh, when they're looking is Invincible Number 1, the Larry's Comics variant, um, which basically is the same exact cover, but it says Larry's Comics uh on there it was one of the original like store exclusives but as you can see it's 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 a tough book to find um nine eights anywhere from three to five thousand uh well here's a nine nine for five thousand wow that's crazy 
But nine eights two two thousand. That, that's tough. Um, let me Buy see it now, I'm, Brian. Buy it now. Five thousand yeah. nine nine. Do it. Do it. Do it. Buy it. Show. Yeah. <laughs> shit. I, if I had that much money, I'd be paying my uh, my rent with it. But sure. this is a, a tough book too. This is the first appearance of Invincible and Noble Causes Family Secrets. Um, this is a book I do own, but it was a tough book to find. Also, it's a homage uh, mm -hmm. to. Days of Future Past, and you can see there's Invincible in the bottom left-hand panel on the cover. So came out before Invincible number one. So that's uh, cool stuff. Next on the list, yeah, Star Wars The Clone Wars number one. <laughs> never owned one of these. Always wanted one. Never pulled the trigger, even when they were 100 raw, even there when they were 60 raw. I said, I'll find one in the wild. I still don't own one, and it makes me want to cry. Like I know, I know everybody's giving Marco for for crying shit for crying, but I think I might really cry here. Dude. I think I might really cry here over this. I had to finally just bow out. I had to bow my head and say nope, and just let it go. Just be like <laughs> nope. It's that's the nope nope book. You can have it. I'll never own it. Yeah, Doc Joe. He says money book. What are you talking about? You, I saw you pull one of these a nine point eight out of a CGC unboxing the other day. Don't give me any. <laughs> Check crap. out that unboxing. Oh, that yeah. was great. Thanks for doing that. That was a cool unboxing. It was really cool to have you on doing that. That was yeah. nice. Except for yeah. the Ohio State stuff. I mean, that stuff. Whatever you can get rid of that. But besides that, it was great. But yeah, great, great book, great cover. Uh, love this book. Would love to have the variant too, of course. But um, next book is another big book, but. It's a book that uh, I just has really eluded me, and that is Marvel Spotlight number five, first appearance of Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. Love this book, absolutely love this book. A uh, uh, seven o sold, seven five sold at an auction I was at for twelve hundred dollars last week. Um, this is another one of those expensive books, but it's you know once Keanu gets uh, announced, man, game over. Like this is this. Well, I'll never be able to own this book. Um, do you think if they announce Keanu, that's that's you, I mean, that's a ten grand book. Do you see it going that high? You see it hitting yeah. 10, 20 grand? I don't know about that, but I see it, it going going high. You know what's interesting about this book? I have sold five or six of these with the off spray on it. You know what I'm talking about? Where where they used to spray the books because it was like the discount thing where they had to do the thing with the spraying of the books on it, everything like that. And now how many people want this book i just like sometimes when you see some of these books you're like man it's just so funny it's just so fun you know like the tear cover and all the offspring and stuff like this and this book i didn't i don't understand why people didn't want it and then when they were starting to buy those i knew that like this is going to be it's gone now you know what i mean like it's over the hill it wasn't like the clone wars one that you said where it was like overnight and it went over the hill this was one where you start to see people not complain anymore about that overspray and then they were just picking it up, and you're like, oh, here it goes, 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 which is yeah. really cool. You've got some books that are going to be tough. you got to – man, I hope you're making lots of money because these books no, are not. Tough. That's, that's, why, that's why these are books that elude us, man. That's yeah. why they're books that elude us. You should have I mean, bought them before. No, these are books you should have bought before. Obviously, that's what they are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, man. They elude us. Obvious. Uh, yeah, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> go back to crying. Um, I'm go back to crying. <laughs> I should have bought this book before. <laughs> one of one of the things that I that I really collect are creator firsts. I talk about it a lot. Of course, you know, a type of book I'm talking about is like Coyote, uh, the first uh, uh, Todd McFarlane. Uh, you know, stuff like that. I, I love creator firsts and, um, one creator first book that I've been looking for, for a long time that, uh, my compatriot John Z owns two of, I think now is the very first Frank Frazetta in comics work. And that is Tally Ho comics. Um, he did the snowman art there and this is a really tough book to find in high grade. And a lot of people didn't know about it for the longest time, but they definitely know now, and uh, this is a book that I absolutely love for the history of comics. Um, I talk about it all the time. A lot of people don't know about the history of comics, especially when it comes to creator firsts. I love their first very published, their very first published work. I love their first covers. I love like when they do, when a, a creator is known for a character the first time they drew that character. Like obviously, like Spider Man two ninety nine, the first time McFarland drew Spider Man. Uh, you know, the first Neil Adams Batman, the first like Jim the, the, Pro Like when you brought uh, Greg Capullo, his first work. Yeah, yeah. His first the, published work. And he, he was like, 
holy crap, you have this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's the type of stuff that I absolutely love. And it's the history of comics. And if you guys watch uh, the channel and you ever see us do uh, creator interviews, it's one of the questions that we always ask is, what is your very first you know work that you ever did? And most of them are pretty embarrassed by it. But listen, don't be – if there's any creators that are watching this – don't be embarrassed by that stuff. That's the type of stuff that we love. We love mm-hmm. to see uh, the progression of art. We love to see, uh, just like Creator First, I love when creators were kids and sent in letters to books. You can find a bunch of Todd McFarlane letters in comic books. You can find Frank Miller letters in comic books. You can find George R. R. Martin letters in comic books. I know they don't do it anymore, but if you can go through some of those old books and you do never know who's going to you're going to see as a young kid sending letters into the you know back pages of of comics. So creator first are, are my thing and uh frank frazetta is a god in in art not just comics art and uh this is his very first comics uh work that's a cool book man. yeah uh my final one is another history of comics thing i'm a big fan of fringe topics uh especially ufos and aliens i grew up listening to coast to coast am with art bell um the the greatest radio host in history uh greatest interview in history i think he's better than howard stern um uh, rest in powerful peace art bell if any of you guys listen to am radio growing up you know who i'm talking about you know about mel's hole you know about uh you know father malachi martin you know about area 51 because of art bell and coast to coast am and that is a big part of my childhood and this right here is a big part of comic book history because this isn't a really a comic. This The spirit started out, uh, Will Eisner created the spirit to put in newspapers. And um, he would put it in newspapers throughout the country. It'd be a little pull out in newspapers and be like newspaper size. And uh, this is the September 28th, 1947 spirit pullout. And it is the very first mention of UFOs in comic books. Uh, it happened just recently after the Ken Arnold sightings um, in uh, Pacific Northwest. And uh, this is it right here. And I still do not own this. I look for it daily on my eBay searches. Um, I own a couple of spirit pullouts. Uh, I look for this one and his very first one. And they're super tough to find in high grade because they're so old and the paper. Uh, but this is really cool. So very first, I, I collect UFO and alien stuff in comics. Um, I have a bunch of Golden Age stuff. I love those old school Golden Age UFO stuff. And this is the one, uh, the very first mention of UFOs in comics. So um, hey, very cool stuff. I think that's real cool. And we we got other new listeners to this. And Coast to Coast, I listen to too. And I've always had this question for you. And I always forget to add. Did you think Coast to Coast w- wasn't a, a put on? Wasn't a spot? No, it's 100% not a spot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, <laughs> Okay. Are, are you trying to say that stuff was fake? You're crazy. I've met Art Bell. I've talked to Art Bell. No, no. Some of those guys were fake, but Art yeah. Art Bell wasn't putting them on as fakes. Um, one of the, the you know, whole, some, like yeah, listen, okay. Area no, Fifty One. No, 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 I like yeah. this. No, it's all right. Yeah, no, Bob, I'm not trying to knock you, dude. Yeah, no, if you, Bob Lazar. If you think, it's, if you think Bob, it's not a spot, that's okay. You, I would, just, you wouldn't know about Area Fifty One if it weren't for uh, George Knapp and Bob Lazar. And Bob Lazar, 100, worked at Area Fifty One. Um, yeah, he he might not have his transcripts at MIT, <laughs> but there are people that have met Bob Lazar. Marco, you can do that all you want. This is something that I definitely know. I've oh, no, worked, no, I'm sorry. I've no, worked no, in the arrows. Yeah, I worked yeah. in the aerospace industry. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I've talked to astronauts that ha- have have seen stuff. Um, a lot of fighter pilots have seen stuff. So if you don't, I mean, listen, the, the Navy released, the government recently came out and said that these things are real. They don't know what they are. So if you don't yeah, think uh, unidentified objects are no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like with that show, like I knew guys that would call into the oh yeah yeah when yeah yeah the people yeah, would call yeah, and make call like, and the most not. famous one is the one that uh, the guy called in that said he worked at Area 51 and he yeah. was crying on the phone. If you guys don't know that big big big, yeah. big history in comics, that was Michael Avon Emming right. um, that called in. Uh, no no but, but yeah, I, I knew guys from LA and stuff too that would do like they would do like I 
I knew that like the, how I, so that's why I was asking you is because like, I wasn't trying to do the face thing. I was saying like, I knew a lot of guys that did spots on that show, like did spots, not saying that Art Bell was in on the spots, but there was a lot of spots that I knew that was on the show. And it's interesting listening to you talk about it because when you talk about it, just like you did right there, you talk about it with so much passion and like, well, the, well, when you talk about spots, you're talking about uh call in Friday episodes where people would call in and give their stories. I'm talking about when he would talk to real insiders, Bob yeah. Lazar, Malachi, yeah, the, Martin. Whole, the whole thing too. I, I know somebody who helped out with the whole, where it was like, you heard the devil through the hole. Like I, they like, I understand some of the stuff or whatever. I just, that's why I've always wondered is like, I, I get what you're saying. Listen, and John I, Lear is not a spot. John Lear's dad created the Lear Jet. John Lear knew Jimmy Doolittle. That's he's that guy's not putting on a shoot. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, the Defense Minister of Canada was really the. I mean, the, this guy was the Defense Minister of Canada. Um, there's two men that the, the six man to walk on the moon. That guy was not was not uh, you know a, a spot. So like these people are credible people. Don't get me wrong. You need to know how to separate the wheat from the chaff out there. There are people who are doing shit just to fuck around. Michael Avon Emming, this and that. But there are also people who have very much credibility, firefighters, police officers, jet pilots who are flying billion-dollar aircraft. If, if, mm -hmm. if you don't think that these people ha are credible, then there's something wrong with you. I'm just – no, I'm just saying that all – like it's funny because like we see it from two point of views. I knew the people that were doing spots on that show. Not saying that everybody was. I knew the people that were doing spots on that show. So that's why I was saying, like, when I was listening to it, it was very entertaining and I loved it. But I was also because I knew people that were doing the spots on the show. And then to hear somebody else say, no, I know the other aspect of that, the people who supposedly weren't doing spots on the show. Like, that's also that. Like, I remember a couple of years ago you saying this. And when you were saying it, I was like, man, I really knew some people that were doing spots on that show. But Brian seems to know people that, that weren't. And that was very interesting to me that like to be able to do it. We both thoroughly enjoyed that show for two complete different reasons. You see what I'm saying there? It's yeah. not like it just was interesting to see the fact that like, you know, I didn't know people that were doing spots. You knew people obviously that weren't. I would suggest uh, just to just to, you know, put, tie this up in a bow. I would suggest that people look into Edgar Mitchell. Uh, Edgar Mitchell was the sixth man to walk on the moon. One of the last people to walk on the moon. He was a fighter pilot. Um, who, you really think who, we walked on the moon? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. 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 I thought there was like this radiation field that we've never really got through. And I think and there's I a guy with a blue penis to the Van thing. Allen belt. And um, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's certain problems, but yeah, we walk. I think that, I think that we walked on the moon. I don't think we walked on the moon as many times as we said we did, but I think that we walked on the moon. I believe Isn't it weird though we got there in the sixties and we don't get there now. Exactly. Exactly. It costs a lot of money though, too. So I, I think there is definitely weird things about it. Don't get me wrong. I think that uh, a lot of it was Cold War stuff that we were trying to get there before the Russians. And a lot of that stuff was filmed um, on a set. I really do believe a lot of that stuff was filmed on a set, but not all of it. Um, you know, there, there's stuff that we don't know and there's stuff that uh, we do know. Um, but. Well, yeah, Art Bell was a medic during the Vietnam Arbel War, and he also he also uh, holds the record for the longest amount of time to be live broadcasting. So, very cool stuff. Yeah, well, so, I, was, I was just making my point was that Art Bell was very interesting to different people. It was the point of that, but yeah, that's cool. Very but cool stuff. Is there a book out there that you guys have gotten that that used to be on your elude list, and now it because of something cool happened that you actually own that book now? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. What about you? Oh me, yeah. I actually went and grabbed them real quick. Let's see them. Okay, so books that didn't elude me. So thanks Jesse and Brian, but my Batman Adventures twelve. Nice dude. Nice. And then the rest, and then like you know, another thanks to Jesse and shout out to everyone talking about the Doomsday Clock. But I got to sign Jeff Johns number one on Doomsday Clock. That's a dope cover with the lenticular. Yeah. yeah. That's so badass. Oh, man. I'm jealous. So these next few books are shout out to my buddy Chuck, but he got me a Batman 232. That's clean. That's nice. Trash. Throw it. Just let me know when you throw Batman it out because I want to pick it up. <laughs> 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 There's no comic books out there, huh? Wow. Punisher. In good shape. Ugh. I mean, Spider-Man 238. 
Yeah, you should throw all yeah. those out. Trash so. day. When's your trash day? Tuesday? <laughs> throw all those out. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's once in a while. You know, it happens. The stars are line, and fucking, you know, we do end up with cool books that yeah, uh, right place, right time. That's dope. It's the best. I yeah, think. I, uh, I think Chuck, uh, our your, our buddy Chuck, really did that for a lot of people. He 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 made their dreams come true with that collection with a lot of people, man. So, very cool stuff. Yeah, that one twenty nine is sick, man. That was in oh, great dude. shape. That's, yeah, all those look really clean. And the other one he had was actually nicer. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't get my Dark Hawk one number one out, damn it. Nobody <laughs> likes that book. All right. You know, uh, I, I did find a Turok number one the other day, and uh, I picked that bad boy up. <sighs> so hard to get. This, you know but before I we think- get into WandaVision real quick. Uh, One thing that we did talk about early on the show uh, was the PulseCon stuff. And uh, Hasbro, uh, and Marco knows a lot about this, uh, obviously, is for the the Star Wars stuff. Hasbro is doing this PulseCon stuff where I guess they're releasing new exclusives online on on Fridays. What's going on with this? Yeah, so what they're doing, so they were doing, they haven't done one since November, but they're doing these like uh, first Fridays where they're trying to roll out what they're going to show up and they're trying to talk about issues that they're having. For all those people that don't know what's going on, and uh, especially with Hasbro and the toy business right now, they're having a big bot problem where bots are like swooping up all the toys before it even makes it out the shelves. They're doing exclusives through, mainly Hasbro does it through uh, Target, Walmart, and and Best Buy. And it is causing a huge issue, especially at Walmart, because I mean, it's Wally World, dude. Like, what do you expect? But um, fans are really upset. If you actually watched Paul's the first Friday this week, it was, I mean, people roast people on the internet all the time. Hey, we got some great people in the chat. Roast me. I love it. But they were giving it to, they were giving it to the guys here at uh, Paul's. They were, I mean, just flat out, stop the exclusives. We want to buy more. You know, these toys aren't selling. They wanted the Darth Maul and the Black Series. That figure still to this day, if you're looking for the original Black Series one, is very expensive to the point that people have given up even buying it and they just go to China and buy the knockoff because they just want it in their collection. These aren't things where guys are like FOMOing it. They really aren't FOMOing it. The fans are literally telling Hasbro, we just want the figure. Like we don't, we don't care. So we'll even buy the knockoffs at this point. And what Hasbro then decided to do to first off, they started off with, we hear your problems, by the way, instead of, uh, releasing it right away we'll open it up at the after we talk about it and when they did all items that they opened up sold out in like average 23 seconds so it did not solve the problem at all hasbro has the worst pre-ordering problems and so does their exclusives but for some reason the other toy store people didn't they ended up then coming out with characters obviously everybody wanted raven and they wanted the darth maul to be re-released instead they re-released the jar jar binks they re-released uh yeah, Qui Gon Jin. They're like, so you could have your fight with Raven, and everybody said nobody, or with uh, Darth Maul, and everybody said nobody in the duels, and they said we don't have Darth Maul. We only have the Chinese knockoff because we can't get it. They did a battle droid, which they did the three inch before, so now they have a six inch, and they were really proud of it. The guys might kept cutting out too. There's not a lot of times I'd say this, but the, the dude, there's some people you just like to punch in the neck, and that guy was one guy where you're just like man, I can't, please stop. Just your mic's breaking up and you're telling people you're trying to fix the problem or you hear the problem, but you're not fixing it at all. And you saw it in chat. They were killing them. Then Mm -hmm. they said, well, we've got a great thing. These products weren't made for the U S anyways. They're for made for overseas, but we're selling them here. And they came out with these ingenious ideas. This is what they're rolling out. People are, mind you, people were asking for Revan. They were asking for Darth Maul to be redone, redone for the third time. That's how rare it is to get that figure. They're asking for it to be redone for the third time. They're asking for like a couple of other figures that were coming out, some of the gaming greats, some of the other stuff. And they came out with the Atat Rider. Not just collectors, people, yeah. Uh, they came out with the Atat Rider. That's a big one. Pa- Pueblo, uh, they didn't even come out. When this guy came out, all you saw was Mother Bleepers, you couldn't even give us Wicket. You gave us the sixth Ewok, like yeah. for real. And they yeah, did. That's not even in the top three. I mean, you don't have Chirpa. You don't have, like, that's the one you went with. Get out of town. Come on. 
And then they gave like the layout that they just did in the three six for the the reprint for that. It was like ah, uh, they did. Then the one that they did, that, and this this was the icing on the cake. So they give this whole speech on how they're going to do, stop right there. They, they give this whole speech how they're going to do everything right. The pre-orders, they're trying to work on it. Then they came out with these two figures. The two figures everybody's claiming for in the three inch, three and quarter. And by the way, 12 seconds later, because they let it pop up right away, these two figures were sold out. 12 yeah, and, and it's kind of weird. bought it out. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they did it. The these the first the six inch uh, the black series figures were available for pre order at Best Buy, and That's the cool. yeah these ones were available for order at Walmart, mm -hmm. and then the two like you said that everybody wanted were available at uh, an online toy store. Yeah, so they they started at Pulse. They started at Pulse. They sold out with Pulse in twelve seconds. But you could go to a couple toy stores. And the toy stars had battled the bots better, better than Hasbro did. That was the weirdest part. Like you could still order these up to like 24 hours later because smaller toy store chains or smaller toy store individuals were battling bots where Hasbro was just like, whatever, man. And it really got annoying. And then their exclusives too that they rolled out for some of their regular exclusives were Obi-Wan Kenobi with a plastic cape and they were bragging about how it had the vinyl cape, which I don't think anybody really cared. A Jawa with a cloth cape. Yeah, these are them. So a Jawa with a cloth. Great. And the guy made a point to say like, oh, in the original, he didn't actually have a vest. I don't think anybody cares. What they care is that they can get the figure, man. Like they don't care about that. A Jawa. Yeah, we all know the guy cut his sock up and put it on Jawa. Nobody's like, yeah, dude, that's what I really want. <laughs> Got a sock. Uh, Obi Wan, we put a we put a vinyl cape on him. Really? That's what people were clamoring for. That's what people were clamoring for. And then they gave they did they did they did finally show the full art for the Bad Batch. But we already knew those two characters were coming out, and they came out with a new trooper, which was Matt. So this trooper looks really good in the pictures, but when you see him up in person, is the blandest troop building character you have ever seen. And it just is like, no, no, you guys, they, they're just not listening to it. You know, we've had this conversation before sometimes when they get off track, especially with their merchandising. And right here, they're not. There's going to be people, you know, I know somebody said collectors are trying to file trucks in. I get that. But we've had these conversations in some of our boards. And they're not even, there's a guy that's got, what, what, what did Mike Morales say? He said there's a guy that had 27, that means nine cases listed of a certain figure. That means he got it before it even got to the floor from Walmart. And I personally witnessed somebody in one where I was at, looking for an employee, couldn't find it. The stuff was on the U-boat. The dude just literally took the box off the U-boat. Boxes were dropping everywhere and walked up to the cash register and self-checked it out. You know, I mean, this is just, it's getting out of hand. It really is. And um, it's disappointing. You know, they can say they're listening to fans and everything like that, but they're really hurting a great market here. Unfortunately, and it's pro, you know, I hear Brian a lot of times talk about the card market, especially with cards, what's going on here. The same thing is occurring with this and with the exclusives. Hopefully they open it up. Yeah, I know it'll taint the market a little bit, but there still will be that, like, there's always been a first wave in toys, right? If you can get the toys in the first wave before they restock and resell them, you can make a decent profit. So for the flipping profit won't go away. The problem with it is, is they're just, they're, and you're always gonna have somebody buying off the stock boy. But you can't do what you're doing now. You can't have bots buying it out and there'd be people with 50 of them and trying to sell it for four times the amount and not coming back out with it. You can't have a Darth Maul figure that even the reprint is going for like 150, 200 and you haven't come out with that in three years, but you're going to come out with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi with a freaking plastic freaking vest. I love Obi, but dude, I ain't buy who's buying that Obi, man? Shoot, you got Jar Jar Binks with a shield. You know, you could well, come out the, the, thing, come the thing that really pisses me off, like you said, is that with the, it, it happened. It's happened in the card market. It's happening in in uh, in, in uh, the toy market. It's happening in all kinds of video game markets, shoe market. It's making people no longer want to be part of the hobby. Like I wish I could find cards at my Walmart or my hobby store, or if I could buy them for a decent price anymore. Because I can't, I want nothing to do with it anymore. I'm selling all my cards. I'm selling them. All. I'm getting rid of everything because I'm like, I don't even want to see them because I see them and I go, man, I really wish I could go buy a couple blaster boxes to open or I really wish I could get a hobby box to open. No, 
And, and even if you can, they are so expensive because the third market is upping the prices so much. I've seen videos of, of like like you said, Morello said that this guy must have gotten cases from uh, fell off a truck. No, not just that, employees are before the stores open or right as they get there, they're buying them themselves and they risk losing their jobs for it, but they don't care because the resale value on this stuff is ridiculous. If you wanted to go buy, say I, I was like, okay, I would really want to open some cards and I had to go buy some cards. I would have to go on the rese- the, the third market and buy it from a re- reseller and he the prices are so high that it would be stupid for anybody to buy them thinking that you can make your money back. You're spending so much money in this product that anybody would call you a moron for spending that much money. I will. Can I address this real quickly? From Brandon, and I think he's partly right in some things, but that's not what this market, that's not what's happening with this market. What's really happening with this market, especially in cards and stuff like that, is the there's people who are on the same thing we are on right now, and all they need product to open because they're putting out five to six videos. The same thing with the toy hunt. I found it underneath the the thing under yeah. What employees dumping toys in mint condition and the, the ground's got guck and goo and everything else and you pull out mm. the box and the whole thing's clean. That's not it. They're shooting these videos. It's just like if you're crying over a certain figure that comes back so you can get hits. People are shooting videos. They need product. So what they're doing is they can't even go to the store. They're ordering it. The third market then is swiping it up and selling it to them for more. And it's really driving out fans. And that's something... You know, we talked about it in the ones we missed, like the the ghost spider. I didn't yell at the guy in front of me because he's a fan. Like if he got that book over me, honestly, I don't care. I really don't care because he got it. And people should, I'm not telling people what to do, but they should take that approach more. You're going to kill fandom. And if you're trying to make money off this stuff, it's killing us too. Like it's killing us that people are going in there and wiping out stuff just so they can shoot a video and be like, looky what I got. Like, I'm great, but you're holding up a $2 card or you're holding up a 50 cent card or just opening a pack and telling everybody, this is all fam, fucking fam. This is all fam. This is all one love, whatever other keywords you're using in your search to say something, you're really destroying markets so you could get a thumbs up, man. And I, look, I and what can I say? I'm talking to you guys here, but I'm doing it more because you guys are all my homies. So I like to hang out with everybody, including the chat. But like, I get that people are trying to make a living or doing something out of it. That's not me. But to like do this, you're ruining a market. They really are ruining markets. And these guys that are swiping it off there, the third thing, yeah, like I get it. They're making a couple bucks off the back end, but they're killing fans. We cannot kill fandoms because when the lows come through, it's going to hurt us. Everybody always talks about the bubble bursting. The bubble doesn't burst because there's not fans anymore, The bu- or not not supply anymore. The bubble bursts because you got rid of fans. Yeah. And they and P- Hasbro's getting rid of them right now. These card companies are getting rid of them right now. And all these people that are sitting there and they got their channels for two or three years and they're like, whoa, look at all the thumbs up I got. Look at all the fans we got. Look at all the homies. we, Whatever you want to call your little, whatever you're going to call it. That's great because in two my years. Peeps. Huh? My peeps. Yeah. I my, Yeah. All the, uh, one love. One love, fam. Like, I don't even know what that is. I, I heard this kid say it while opening Pokemon cards. I'm like, what? what what's this one love, fam? You're destroying a market. And you're saying one love fan, everybody positive vibes. Like that ain't positive vibes if you're yeah. you're you're crushing a market so you can get a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. turtle figures too. Yeah. Like they're really it's not just us old dudes or younger dudes getting into you can't get kids into stuff, man. I those, have to buy those new turtle figures are it's I, I was gonna get some and I turned I said nope, I'm not even gonna get um, again, exactly what you're saying. I I turned my head and I said nope, I'm not even gonna chase them because it I watched them in two, three minutes, and boom, they're already way, way overpriced, and you can't touch them. You can't. Well, find I walk them. down the toils at my local Walmart all every time I go there, just to see, and it's blown out every time I go there. Same with Target, you go in there and it's just blown out. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and I don't disagree with Brandon. We've always had these issues. We had the '90s issues of overprinting in that stuff the FOMO stuff I get all that stuff I get that's what I'm saying this is the new way of the market's getting killed right and it's a bad way because like Kyle just said even with that you had people in lines people were actually getting stuff people aren't there aren't even lines you can't believe me because I I don't know where everybody else is but I know me and a lot of the groups that I talk to and stuff like that 
even with our connections, we get stuff. We do. I mean, I have a stack right there of Pokemon cards for birthdays, for kids' birthdays in the neighborhood when parents need it. I I don't gouge. I just, because kids are into that type of stuff to keep the fandom going. I hear it. I'm not expecting everybody to do that. What I'm saying is this is what's killing it right now. Bots are killing it right now. And and these people who are, are opening packs right off the back is what's killing it right now. And if you see it, I'm not telling you, you don't have to be Marco and like some dude steps on your shoes and you go give him the words of advice. I'm just saying like, know that it's happening. And maybe every once in a while in the comment section, somebody says, look at how cool this is. You just say, yeah, no, that's not really cool because you're killing the market. If you don't feel that way, that's cool too. I'm just saying from my point of view, that's what's happening. I think a lot of us are getting burnt out. You heard Brian, who is a huge like package opener. Like he's not doing it anymore. And you know, it's sad. I, it really I, is sad. My girlfriend actually works at Walmart, you know, and I told her, I said, look, she's been working there since before Christmas because they needed extra help. I live in a small town. Uh, literally, it's not a huge giant town. And I said, keep your eye open. The day that they put cards on the shelf, these are the three types of cards I'm looking for. I'd love to get some for Brian for Christmas. That'd be great. That was, let me see, that was in November, around mid-November. Cards have not hit that shelf. Literally, they don't even put them on the shelf anymore, and they're already gone. They're gone. I think at, at my Walmart, there's hand sanitizer where the cards used to be now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think, too, I mean, with that being said, you know, I, and you can't correct everything. I kind of like the 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 part that Target was taking originally when everything happened. They were telling people that if you bought collectibles, you were not allowed to return them. And they got in trouble for it. But I think it's right. Like, if you want to buy these, if you want to take a bet, on, go buy a comic book and try to go return it to a comic book. Get out. I saw one dude. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hey, you can do it on eBay. You can do it on eBay. All right, let's get into WandaVision. WandaVision episode four uh, was probably the best of the, the bunch. Uh, would you guys all agree? I know Kyle, me and Kyle talked about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it was really, really good. You they, know, Kyle and Matt has been telling you guys for weeks to stay in for this one, and I, I'm i glad I did because it was amazing this week. It was absolutely amazing. I was so bummed when it ended. I it was one of those episodes where I was like, it felt like it was like, the, I'm like, it just started. There's no way it's already done. I thought it was actually like they were actually doing the credits as like a joke. as like a play into the show. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, w the thing about this new one is they kind of threw me for a loop how they told it. And then I caught on, but I didn't understand what was going on when this started happening, when they showed her like coming back i thought she was coming out of the wandaverse and i was like didn't we see her get thrown out and then i realized oh, okay this is everybody returning after thanos snap mm -hmm. and i thought that was really cool how they returned the same way they left right at the same moment yeah that yeah, was when cool. iron man snapped cool. everybody returned yeah um and, and so let's basically we'll go over some of the, the cool Easter eggs. Everybody's talking about Easter eggs. And uh, this was uh, this was just like the rest of them. Easter eggs galore. Um, obviously, the, the snapping stuff was on there. Yep. Uh, that was a really cool one. Uh, this was kind of interesting where they talked about Captain Marvel and um, basically like you you forget for a bit of time that. Um, Captain Marvel was well. I guess in Captain Marvel, it was her mom, right? It was, it was her uh, mom, yeah. yeah, her mom. So, um, but it says here as Monica rematerializes, you can hear moments from Captain Marvel, namely Maria saying that she can't leave Monica and go to space. Carol saying that Maria has one of the best kids, and Carol calling Monica by her nickname. So that was a, a, a moment that I'm glad they put in there because that made me realize what was going on. Um, and I love how they call her Lieutenant Trouble. And uh, basically, that's what she is. She's causing trouble. But this was kind of some cool stuff, um, all the sword stuff. And this, uh, you can see that one of the news channels uh, talking about the blip, or I guess that was what everybody, when everybody left and came back. And WHIH World News, which has been used throughout the MCU movies and TV shows. And that's kind of cool that they're keeping that continuity. That's kind of cool. Um, and isn't that, uh, what's her name? That looks like a chick that played um, Psylocke. What's her name? I can't Maybe remember Mund? her name. Yeah, Mund. Yeah, it looks like her, doesn't it? 
Olivia Munn? A little bit, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, she was uh, in another great TV show, uh, The Newsroom. God, that okay. show so good. Uh, here's somebody that says, while she's never met T- Tyler Hayward until now in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there was a Brian Hayward who turned out to be a member of Hydra. Let's just say that I can't imagine what this co- is a coincidence after is Marvel after all. So, yeah, I guess uh, that's interesting. I didn't know about that one. I totally forgot about that. I didn't, I didn't remember that Hayward character. Um, this was one that I did like, though, how when she walked by the thing and she saw her mom's thing on the wall, it said Maria Photon Rambo. Because yeah. I think we were talking about this on a show the other night. We were like, is she going to be Photon? What's she going to be? And then it made me remember, no, her mom was Photon. Right. And, and yeah, you go back to the Captain Marvel and you see Photon on her jet. So, yeah, that would make her, I mean, give her a better chance at being Captain Marvel. Right. And, and, or or uh, the other character or the other name she gets in. Um, what was the other name? Spectrum? Was that it? Spectrum? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she gets that that name, too. So she she could be the Spectrum character. Um. This is her just going through uh, the sword place and uh, mentions that they're focusing on nanotech now, nanotech. which is, uh, yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it's actually, I mean, you, you kind of figured out the timeline anyway, but they're actually dropping hints of actually exactly where this is fitting in. Yes. I mean, exactly. it was, it's, it's obvious, but they're, at, they're, they're, they're letting you connect more dots to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like this part, um, you know, how she talks about all the threats in space and allies, how she thought these guys, you know, these guys were considered threats at first, like Talos and the Skrulls, but they were allies. And, and that was a big that that was a big part of Captain Marvel for me is the fact that the Skrulls ended up being the good guys. Right. We always mm-hmm. thought they were the bad guys and they ended up being the good guys. And I love that part about Captain Marvel It's one of the few things about Captain Marvel I really liked. This was uh, super cool. This yeah. is where I was thinking about you in Coast to Coast. I was like, dude, Brian's going to love this episode because of all this stuff right here. It brought back good memories to me. And I knew when you were watching it on the other end, it probably brought back good memories to you too. This was really cool. This really yeah. was. When, when they t- when they were like, uh, no, we're from Eastview. Yeah. <laughs> Eastview, right? <laughs> you know yeah. Uh, this was interesting how they brought back Jimmy Woo. Speaking and he, of Yellow yeah. Claw. Yeah. yeah. And they have uh, the the magic trick, like that's how they introduce him. He's doing the magic trick stuff that he was doing from Ant Man. I love that. I love how Marvel l- uses continuity. They're so good at it. Like th- their continuity team has to be. They need raises, whoever they are. Um, but this is interesting. I didn't. I didn't notice this one. It says uh, home is where you make it. And then if you remember on the very first one where it said welcome oh. to Westview, home is where you make it, is in the sign, same sign. Um, let's see here. This is, uh, it says that, uh, elevation 203 Avengers issue 203 is about the beast and wonder man searching for a young boy in the sewers later in the episode sword uses the sewers to try and get Wanda's version of the Westview. I think that might be stretching it, but you I never think know. so too, but yeah, you never know. You never know. Uh, this is uh, another one where it says on the vehicle, it says uh, 8512 and the numbers on it, which could be a reference to Vision of Scarlet Witch number 12, the 12 issue limited series, a comic book that started in 1985. I don't know about that one, but whew. yeah, it's kind of a stretch, right? And issue number 12 was the one with the, yeah, with the twins. That's probably a stretch. This one was cool though, how it ended up being the sword uh, drone that they sent in. Yeah, cool how they yeah. did too. How yeah. it got the like old school version of it because it does it turns into whatever age that <clears throat> they're actually shooting the episode in. That was cool. Yeah, it was really cool, man. Um, yeah, it's the same color as Captain Marvel's suit. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I never noticed that one. Uh, some of these are are probably you know a, a stretch, but I love I like- how they brought in Cat mm-hmm. Dennings. Yeah. yeah, I love Cat Dennings. Yeah, so do I. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah awesome. dude, awesome. that's so good. Never got her cup of coffee either. Yeah, and I love how when they introduce her on the episode, she's like, (laughs) (laughs) he tells her, "I'm a chemical scientist." Nobody cares. Nobody cares. (laughs) You already lost your shot, dude. That was awesome. (sighs) That was good. Um, The hexagon shapes are everywhere. Obviously, Uh, we've talked about that before. I think that's kind of been talked about. Um, you know, the CMBR that, that they talk about that in, uh, in Marvel all the time. Right. I really like what they did where they pulled out the old, 
the old like World War II transponder and they got to see the like uh the vision of that and she's like bring out the TV I mean a big one I yeah. thought look I like her anyway so anything she was saying in this TV show I was like this is cool and they did her oh right there and they did her justice and then they started going through I like how they explained how they were talking over the radio too. They just did a ton of stuff. This was one of those episodes. I don't know how everybody else felt about, but this was one of those episodes when it was done. You're like, nah, just five more minutes, please, mom and yes. dad. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Right? Mm -hmm. it really yep. was a five more minute episode. And, and the, I did like this. How this when they finally show this, you realize, oh, that's who was watching it back in the first episode. Remember, they showed this somebody watching the show on this little thing, and you're like, what the hell is that? Are they monitoring them or what? And they go back and play. They do the whole, you know, Quentin Tarantino back in time stuff. That was cool too. How they start doing the printout like screen mm -hmm. of who everybody was. That was good. But they don't know who she is yet, right? They don't know who uh, Agnes is or Agatha Harkness. You know, they don't know because she's new. She's the witch, right? She's she's the one probably pulling strings somehow, or she's been sent oh, there to pull strings. Somebody, yeah, I know who that could be. Okay, yeah, yep. we've talked about it before. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of cool. It's got, um, the two characters that, uh, were when they were choking. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, this is when they were trying to reach her through. That was interesting. That was very interesting when they're trying to reach her, um, through the, uh, the radio. Yeah, we saw it before we knew it was something. And then to explain the explanations, I think that's part of the show, right? Like it's not, this episode wouldn't have been good if they, did a crappy job with the explanations. They did such a good job mm -hmm. explaining every single Easter egg from before. What, it, what I it, liked on this was we saw the glitches in the first three episodes as they're watching it. They don't get to see the redone. It's all like, you know, it's all gone. Like they don't yep. even get, I thought that was actually awesome. they're white, like no more mutants, right? They're white. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was kind of creepy when they, sh when he walked in and he looked like yeah. that, that was kind of creepy, man. You know the, how she saw him. How he saw him. That was, but it was still really cool. Um, I don't know, man. Some of these things they really, they really, uh, you know, are are stretching for. But the the voodoo child uh, thing was really cool. How they ended it, and they had the Jimi Hendrix song. I thought that was a perfect song for how they mm -hmm. ended it. They did a really good job on that. But yeah, not, I mean, it was a good episode, but I think it was a more fill in the gaps type episode. It was fun. Yeah. It finally made you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They needed to do it. If they didn't do this episode now, I think it was done. You know, we've talked about the timeline before and how they, well, why did they throw one and two together? And it was because they had to get to episode four or you were going to lose the audience. Yep. And they got to it now. Like they kept the audience on. It was really good. They filled in all the gaps. Everything happened where it wasn't unbelievable. Stuff makes sense. You know, they, they pushed a lot of the Easter eggs out for the people that don't understand what it was. They filled in the backstories with it. It's good, man. It really is what it was promised to be. It's a good TV show. And mm -hmm. I know somebody said 22 minutes runs really fast in the chat. But the truth of the matter is I've seen some very long 22 minutes and yes. that was not it that was like a 10 minute like man i wish there's a little bit more i wish they gave us just a tad bit more and then what started kicking my head is okay we did 60s and 70s are we going to 80s next and thinking about all the 80s tv show i was American starting to get show, excited right? thinking about that well it's facts of not facts of life uh is it facts of life that they're doing family ties family ties yeah family ties yeah yeah, but then you get the meme where they were saying that they could do the Bundies, and I was like, I hope they do the Bundies. Oh, man. That would be the 90s, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, like, 90s. afterwards, it gets down to that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's that, supposed to be one because there's a clip of uh, Scarlet Witch dressed up like Peg. Uh, I think that was I think that was something that somebody made, but maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong, but how funny would it be? Because you know they own Fox right now, so you know a TV show I'm thinking that they might be able to do a little... Uh, if you're going to do a little bit of like fantasy type thing, if, if characters start getting yellowish skin, I mean, they own Fox. They could use those characters. You could have them all sitting on a couch at one point. That would be kind of funny too, dude. Doesn't Disney have the Simpsons now though also? That's what I'm saying. They own Fox. Yeah, they have yeah. Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, that'd be cool. I don't think they're going to do that, but that would be kind of fun. Just nostalgic. -wise. That would be. I'm looking forward to to every week now. They've done a really good job, and uh, I can hardly wait to see when they bring in Doctor Strange. Right, like that's going to be the big part. 
once they bring in Doctor Strange and how they tie everything up. I'm again, hats off to the continuity people. They're killing it. Uh, Kevin Feige, like I put like Kevin Feige's up there with uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni now, right? They can't do no wrong. No, like in Kevin Feige, I trust. Honestly, yeah. I mean, with this, like you saw it and people were even giving it a hard time and they didn't leave. That's why I like, like stick to your guns. If it works, it works. If it doesn't take the L and move on to something that works, but this is working. And I think it'd be hard pressed for anybody to say that it wasn't. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you guys have any uh, thoughts for what the list is next week? Are we going to do cookies? Albuquerque? We're going to do top 10 cookies, whatever, top five cookies. Let's do top five cookies. Yeah, that'd be cool. Top five hey. Albuquerque covers. Hmm? Oh, man, that's going to be hard for me to do. And, 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 and 13's already cut off. You can't do 13. Yeah, you can't use Thanos 13. Well, uh, well, I might have to put this one on here. Well, e either way, you guys keep an eye on the uh, Instagram, the uh, Modern Comic Mayhem IG, and also the Tales from the Flipside IG, and we'll let you know what the list is going to be for next week. If you guys uh, want to take part in that, uh, find out what the list is and send it in, you know, your list into us. You guys can uh, find us at Tales from the Flipside channel at gmail.com or on IG at Modern Comic Mayhem and at Tales from the Flipside. There we go. Hey, everybody in the chat, we appreciate it. Eric, Joe, you guys are awesome. You guys are great. Uh, it's good Not to see you. Rob, always good. Stick boy, great. Everybody and, and else, I miss PJ Patrick. For those of you that don't uh, that don't know, take part in this drinking game. Take a screenshot of that uh, QR code. You'll get the list of words every week. Um, it's a secret drinking game that only Kyle and the people taking part know the the words. I've never known the words. These guys have never known the words. And he changes them up every week depending on what's going on. So you could get really drunk and you might not. I guess it's however many times I say aliens or something like that. So <laughs> tell me if it's Star Wars, though. If it says Star Wars, we're going to have problems. If it is Star Wars, it's going to be so, so make sure you guys hit the – save that QR code. Go sign up for the, for the secret drinking game and uh, have yeah, yourself a good time. Yeah, so we will see you guys next time. Thank you for joining in. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, like, a thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing, and adios. Peace. Peace. Good night.